The cars on the track at the Daytona International Speedway getting ready for the start of the Daytona 500. Budweiser, the official beer of NASCAR, is the proud sponsor of the Budweiser Pole Award. Given to the fastest qualifier at each NASCAR and Nextel Cup Series race, Budweiser congratulates Jeff Burton for his pole in the Daytona 500 and he'll be in the Budweiser shootout in 2007. Here is the starting grid for the 48th running of the Daytona 500. Jeff Burton on the pole, next to three-time Daytona 500 winner, Jeff Gordon. On the inside of row two, Elliott Satter, the winner of the second, the first duel on Thursday, and Kyle <laughs> Busch on the outside. One of them. Yeah, one of those duels. Row three, Jamie McMurray will start on the outside. Carl Edwards on the inside. Everybody will Sorry about that. Everybody will be watching row four. That's where Dale Earnhardt Jr. is. Bobby Labonte will have to drop to the rear of the field. And welcome to Chad Canals. I know he's watching this telecast as Jimmy Johnson starts on the inside of row five. Mark Martin on the outside. Row six, Matt Kenseth's on the inside. On the outside, Kyle Petty. Those guys having a great speed week. Kurt Busch makes his debut for Penske Racing today in the two, and Casey Mears in the 42 this season. On the inside of row eight, 2005 Nextel champion, Tony Stewart, and Greg Bilt will finish second. He's on the outside. On the inside of row nine, our Bud Shootout winner, Danny Hamlin. On the outside, Ryan Newman. There's a rookie in row 10, Martin Truex Jr. won the Bush Series Championship a year ago, and Robbie Gordon makes the Daytona 500 as an owner-driver. Another rookie in row 11, that's Reed Sorensen on the outside. Jeff Green changed cars to the 66 this year. In row 12, and pretty fast right here, Ken Schrader on the inside. Looks that car to be very fast on the outside, Mike Wallace. Three-time Daytona 500 winner Dale Jarrett starts in row 13 and shares that row with Jeremy Mayfield driving for Everham Motorsports. Casey Kane on the inside of 14 and Kevin Harvick out of California on the outside. Row 15, rookie Brent Sherman on the inside. On the outside, two-time winner here, Michael Waltrip. In row 16, Kevin LePage raced his way in and rookie David Stremme for Ganassi Racing. On the inside of row 17, two-time Daytona 500 winner, Bill Elliott and Dave Blaney would like to see one on the outside. Inside of row 18, Brian Brooker's on the inside, and on the outside, J.J. Yealy, now driving the 18 car. Rookie Clint Boyer makes his 500 debut in the 07 car. Joe Nemechek will have to drop to the rear of the field for an engine change. On the inside of row 20, Sterling Marlin, he's won the 500. Travis Quapel, he would love to. On the inside, 21, Hermie Sadler will make a start, and a very happy guy right there on the, ice. Uh, on the outside, Kirk Shelmerdine. And starting 43rd, two-time series champion, Terry Labonte, driving for Roger Stolbach and Troy Aikman. These drivers did not make the Daytona 500, including the 10 car of Scott Riggs. Larry Foyt, Stanton Barrett, Morgan Shepard, Big list of cars did not qualify. Sterling Marlin, Bobby Labonte, Joe Nemechek will have to drop to the rear of the field. Marlin's in a backup car. The other guys had to drop back for an engine change. Now you see the 29 car of Kevin Harvick racing toward pit road. They have waved off the green flag because of that bag you see on the top of his car. That's on our camera. Sure is. We need to get that off before the race Yes. Starts. So he's going to come in, and they'll get that off of there, and then we'll reline the field, and we'll be able to go racing in the Daytona 500. We don't want to rob our viewers of a camera. So. Nope. Not on his car, not on Harvick's car. So he gets the thumbs up from the NASCAR official and heads back out on the track. He heads back out. Final stories from Pit Road. Let's start with Marty Snyder. Well, Bill, quietly, Matt Kenseth has become one of the Daytona Masters. I told him a few moments ago, you know, you finished top 10 in three of your last four races here. And he said, I have? I had no idea. He said, I feel like I'm still learning this place. But Matt has certainly got Daytona down, if you will. Now, he told me it doesn't matter how good you are at this racetrack. All that matters are the friends you have at the end of the race. And you better know those friends because often those friends quickly become enemies. Matt? 
Ryan Newman rolls off from the 18th position. Now, as car owner Roger Penske knows all about winning big events, he won the Indy 500 a record 13 times. He's won a lot of races here at Daytona. The Rolex 24 and 69 with Mark Donahue. Won a qualifying race here with Bobby Allison. A shootout with Rusty Wallace and an ARCA event even here with Ryan Newman. But he's never won the Great American Race at Daytona 500. Newman would love to give him that victory. The car was very loose in final practice with the weather and the changes they've made. Newman thinks they have a great shot. Dave? Matt, the buzz in the garage area this week was how rough Kyle Busch was driving when he was bump drafting. He uh, realized that that might be a problem. And moments before he was introduced to this huge crowd, his veteran teammate, Jeff Gordon, had a very direct conversation with him, telling Kyle, according to Kyle's report to me, that he wanted him to just play it cool throughout the entire race, that he needed to develop friendships throughout this race because he has a very fast race car. And by the end of the race, he needs to be able to work with other cars. Use that throughout the day, Jeff said, and you might be able to win the Daytona 500. Alan? Our sporting heroes are usually defined by victories on their game's greatest stage. In golf, the Masters, Wimbledon for tennis, for a skier or a skater, an Olympic gold medal. In stock car racing, it's this place and this race, Daytona and the 500. Will a Gordon Jarrett or Earnhardt's legend grow today, or will a new driver join the club of never forgotten names as Daytona 500 winners? We're 500 miles from finding out. Bill? Thanks, Alan. Hope you guys have a great day down there on pit road for the Daytona 500. 43 drivers, their final thoughts before they take the green flag in the Great American Race, the number one race on the NASCAR Nextel Cup circuit. The pace car leads them out of turn four. It will head for pit road. They will creep toward the green flag. It's our pleasure at NBC to take you to the green flag for the 2006 season. We'll be there for the checkers in Homestead. Thanks for coming along for the ride. Enjoy the Daytona 500 live on NBC. Oh, we got trouble back here in the middle somewhere. Oh, we've already lost a tire. We've had tire issues throughout the week. It's from Jeff Green's car. He's trying to get to pit road. And that's probably, we've seen a lot of the left rear tires doing that this week, BP. So wouldn't be surprised if it was a left rear. Let's talk to right side tires are up. And unbelievably, he was able to get through all those field of cars to get to pit road. And there you see your left rear, Wally. All right, these guys are finally up to speed. Takes about a lap, lap and a half. Jeff Burton had the advantage here early, and when you're out front like that, you want to run right in the middle. You don't want to be on the bottom or the top, give either one of those lanes an advantage. So Burton's kind of floating around. The longer he can do that, the longer he can lead. He did lead the first lap. Five bonus points for Jeff Burton, leading the first lap of the season. We see the 31, 38 on the, we call that the bottom of the racetrack. The 24 and 5, they're up on what we call the top of the racetrack. All week long, we've seen the bottom be the advantage. That outside group or that high line just has not been able to go throughout speed weeks. See, Jeff Green, the 66, has, has a new tire on the left here, trying to get back up to speed. Down the back stretch. Heading for turn three. Mark Truex makes it three wide on the bottom in the one car. Dave Burns. And guys on that leader, number 31, Jeff Burton, his crew chief Scott Miller told me this morning that bottom line is good, but you have to be able to hold the throttle wide open by the end of the run or it doesn't do you any good. And Jeff Gordon now challenges for the lead. Marty. 
Dave, you'll see a lot of this from Elliot Sadler today running up front. I asked him, are you going to fall back? Some of these teams will fall back trying to avoid the big one. As we talked about in the countdown to green, Elliot said, absolutely not. I want to run up front as much as I can today. Alan? Yeah, ditto for Jeff Gordon, Marty. He told me he wants to be in the top five all day, if at all possible. Less trouble there, and he feels his car runs better when it's near the front of the pack in the cleaner air. Bump drafting down the back stretch. Yep, we just saw Elliot Sadler bump draft the 31 car, and look at how much room that they put between them and Jeff Gordon already. So it will work if you know how to do it. Oh, and Junior gets sh shouldered up to the middle of the racetrack by the 48 of Jimmy Johnson. That's Dylan Hart Jr. in the red number eight. But he has some help with a 26 car of Jamie McMurray. Matt? BP, that's exactly where he was near the end of the Bush Series race on Saturday. In the middle, but Junior feels like they've got a great car for today. They have struggled all week with a tight condition and also a considerable wear issue on the right front. They feel like they've solved that with a little bit of tweak in the setup. Tony Urey Jr. told me they're expecting good things today. His teammate, Martin Truex, who they expect to work together a lot today, is right on the inside. And one car. And these cars are driving really good for these drivers right now. I mean, they're still fresh tires. Actually, being cool today helps a lot. Puts a lot more grip in the racetrack. So these cars aren't sliding around right now as much as they would be if it were 80, 85 degrees out. So the conditions are pretty good. The 24 of Jeff Gordon, the 8 of Dale Earnhardt Jr. Clearly two of the favorites coming in here to start the season. Both have won the Daytona 500 before. Another guy that's picked to go to victory lane today, the 20 of Tony Stewart, an update from Allen. Yeah, Bill, on Thursday in his qualifying race here, Tony Stewart led about the first half of the race. His car was terrific and unpassable out front. But when he got put back in traffic like he is now, it did not handle as well. He got put back there because of a pit stop mistake. Tony Stewart wants to get to the front and try and keep that car in clean air, although they know they're going to have to work hard to get there. Dave? Alan Kurt Busch in his po first points race for that blue number two car, no longer Rusty Wallace's car. His car is actually running very good this weekend. And Craig, crew chief Roy McCauley told me, we've got a solid top 10 car. We just need to use it carefully and wisely. Yeah, Bill. Thanks, Dave. They're using your battering ram out there, BP. They sure are. Want to point out that because of the low ceiling today, heavy overcast in the Daytona Beach area, our helicopter not able to get up to the proper height. We're doing the best we can to bring you our onboard camera coverage. Jeff Gordon, I'm impressed with the way he's hung in on the outside line in that 24 car. And there's a three strong cars right there on the outside. The 24 Gordon, eight Earnhardt, and that 26 car of Jamie McMurray has been fast too. So see if they can. Problem is they got three of their three wide behind them, and that's going to slow that group down. They need to get back two wide single file. If those three can't make that outside move go, it's not going to go. But see, what happens is if your car starts to push down on the bottom, guys will start getting off the throttle, and that's when that outside groove will start pulling up. But it's a little bit too early for that, but we'll just have to keep an eye on it. This is where you look for the teams to use the bump drafting strategy down the backstretch. Elliott Sadler in the 38 falls back in line behind Burton in the 31. Jimmy Johnson in the 48. Look at the 99 up there, way up there. Carl Edwards. Three wide. His second full season driving for Jack Roush had a spectacular 2005. Jeff Burton started on the pole. He has led every lap, the first eight laps. If trouble breaks out, we'll break in. You're watching NASCAR on NBC. Haven't missed a thing. Jeff Burton continues to lead in the Daytona 500. Chevrolet has had tremendous dominance in restrictor plate racing over the years. And here are the Chevy drivers to watch today. Gordon, a three-time winner of the 500. Dale Earnhardt Jr. has a Daytona 500 win. Tony Stewart and Jimmy Johnson chasing their first Daytona 500 win. Jimmy Johnson is chasing it without his crew chief, Chad Knauss, but they did have a team pep talk just before they took the green flag. Here's how it went. Hey, Jimmy. I sure would like to stay down here in Daytona another day and just put off that California prep. Mr. H offered us to go out and hang out on a boat tonight, so let's see what we can do to join him. All right, guys, um, let's just do what we talked about in the meeting today. Be smooth and clean, save it for the end, you can track position and uh, race for the victory to get this deal. I'm proud of you guys. You guys rock. Let's uh, show the world what we're made up today. Mr. H is team owner Rick Hendrick. 
and the winner of this race, the car is put inside the Daytona USA and the traction just outside the speedway, so all the team will be there in the morning to put their car in the Hall of Fame. Win the race, lose your ride. Exactly, for a year. <laughs> yeah. All right, Jeff Gordon has finally gotten to the inside behind the 31 car. What can he do about getting by Jeff Gordon? I want to point out that Jerry and Grubb is following the shot for Jimmy Johnson today in that 48 team. Normally shares the top of that pit box with crew chief Chad Canals. Canals Jimmy Johnson on the bottom of the 48 car. And Earnhardt Jr. is trying to bring that outside line back up to the front right next to Jeff Burton leading this race. Looks like he's uh, gaining some ground. Red car on the inside was Carl Edwards as he tries to drive back to the front. Yesterday in the 80 degree weather, we saw the Bush series really break apart into a number of packs, but because it's cooler and there's a different aerodynamic package on these cars, basically most of them hanging in the lead pack. behaving themselves no uh, overly aggressive driving as Mike Helton talked about in the drivers meeting yeah you won't see it won't see it this part of the race I mean if you're gonna see the real aggressive stuff it's gonna be towards the end of the race everybody's just trying to get a good feel for the car it's, it's very frustrating for a driver right here because you're following the guy in front of you and there's nothing you can do I mean Earnhardt Jr. is pushing the gas pedal as hard as he can right now but he just doesn't have the speed on that top line that we saw a week here at Daytona to get up there and make a bid for the lead. But so everybody's just holding their ground. So while they continue to run like this, we'll take a break. Jeff Burton hasn't won since Phoenix in November of 2001, but he leads the Daytona 500. We're under caution at Daytona. Rookie Martin Truex Jr. has brushed the wall, bringing out the caution on lap 18. Pit road is open. Let's go to Marty. Well, Bill Elliott Sadler running third, said his car is just a little bit tight. Tommy Baldwin, his crew chief, came on the radio and said, you know what, that may be the win. Let's not adjust it too much. The 38 car is going to hit pit road half around up on the track bar, trying to loosen that car up. Four tires, Dave. Leader Jeff Burton on to pit road. Now his car was just a little bit tight, wouldn't turn the way he wanted it to, but no changes this time. Alan? Well, Jeff Gordon feels like if his car can get out in front of the pack, he'll be hard to catch and hard to pass. Here's his pit crew's chance to do it right here, Matt. The 2004 winner, Dale Earnhardt Jr., already his pit service completed on the right side. They've already made a wedge and track bar adjustment. The car just to take on the tight side, and he's away. Will he beat him off your road? The 38 gets him. Well, according to the computer, Earnhardt Jr. won the race off of pit road. Uh, I don't know about that. We'll have to go to the videotape. We'll have to Let's go to, go the, to the video. video. When we come back, we'll go to the videotape and sort out the running order here in the 48th annual Daytona 500. The field all pulling up behind the Chevrolet Corvette pace car here at Daytona. You're watching NASCAR on NBC. Field is coming to get the green. Wally, here's what brought out the caution. Yeah, watch these two guys right here. You got 25 on the bottom. That's Brian Vickers in the one car. What Vickers just gets loose coming off a of turn two. You see him saving the car, and I think Martin was just probably reacting to the 25 car slowing down and moved. Here's a good shot from Denny Hamlin's car. Watch right up front. Just got squeezed into the wall, so nothing Martin did wrong. He just got squeezed up there. The 88 of Dale Jarrett. Too fast on pit road. Starts at the tail end of the longest line. The 27 of Kirk Shelmerdine over the wall too fast. Tail end of the longest line. As we get ready to go green, Coca-Cola reminds you to drink it down. Start it up. So the video has proved that Elliot Stadler did, in fact, win the battle off pit road. In the 38 car, Junior was second. Jeff Gordon third. Jimmy Johnson fourth in the 48. Can't trust computers, can you? Marty. Yeah, Elliot's got to deal with his guys that every time they, they win the race off pit road this year, he owes them dinner. He said, man, okay, great job, guys. I owe you dinner again. I'm going to be broke by the time we leave Daytona. I don't know if I want you to keep doing that or not. Oh, he does, Marty. Trust me, he does. You buy a lot of dinners if you win this race. Yes, you do, including one here in town tonight. Sadler was extremely strong 
in his qualifying race. Well, we'll see if Junior's going to be patient. I don't think he's going to be patient. <laughs> I think Junior wants to get out front and lead this thing, but he's going to—he's looking in the mirror right now. He's wondering if 24, Jeff Gordon's going to go with him if he pulls out. Or if the 24 is going to try to hook up with his teammate, the 48, Jimmy Johnson, to go by both of them. But that's what you're doing right now. You're looking out the windshield. You're looking out the mirror. You're going, man, I wonder if I should pull out. Are these guys going to go with me? If they don't, you can lose about 15 spots in one lap. Hey, B, what are they saying about the 12? Oh, here we go. Junior's had enough. He's going high. He's going backwards, it looks like, Alan. Yeah, I, I don't know if that was Junior's choice there, Wally, but Jeff Gordon's team, momentary concern when he left his pit box, thought he might have made contact. Oh, yeah, Junior's way up the track. Thought he might have made contact with another car. As you know, Wally and Benny, the front fenders on these cars are so crucial. Someone today will lose this race because they bounce off another car on pit road and change the shape of those fenders and change the aerodynamics on the car. Gordon got away cleanly that time, but a moment of concern for his team. Yeah, they, sp they spent hundreds of hours working on these bodies, making sure that they just slice through the air the best that they can. And if you just dent one of these things, it's going to change the airflow. So it's very important to keep your fender, especially around the front tires, in one piece. You don't want to damage them. Elliot Sadler in the 38 leads. Jeff Gordon in the 24 wants the lead. Oh, he does. That was a very aggressive move by that 24 car going in turn three, trying to get up on the back of that 38 and get him a little bit loose, move him, move him up off the bottom, and then he would go under him. Matt, what's going on with the eight? Well, you're wondering whether he got hung out, which he did, but now he's waiting for his unofficial teammate, Tony Stewart, to catch up and see if they can hook up his spotter, Steve Meal, keeping him abreast of just the closing rate of the cars behind. And Gordon moved that 38 car up off the bottom, takes the lead. Elliott Seller goes back to the fourth position. Comes that outside line. There's Jamie McMurray in the 26, and he's got a lot of help. And again, it's a challenge to make that outside line go. But it's pretty even right now. You know, it's not like there's a lot more cars on the bottom. So it'd be interesting to see. Now the, the field is kind of split right here in this half to see if that high line will go now that it's fairly even with the cars in the high line and low line. Matt Kenseth jumped in front of his teammate in the 26, Matt in the 17. Marty. Hey guys, remember we were talking earlier that the bottom line was actually seemingly to be the, the faster line all week long. Jamie McMurray told me before the race, he's fairly committed to that top line. He said at the end of the Bush Series race yesterday, he felt like that was the line to be in. That was the line that was going to move and produce the winner. So he said, I'm going to stay up high as long as I can today. Well, see, now the high line's got more cars in it than the bottom line. It's just like we talked about in our Home Depot virtual garage. The more, the car, more cars lined up, the faster. Now we're seeing that outside line pretty fast. And I tell you what, Matt Kenseth with the 17 car. Very, <laughs> very impressive move up in turn three. Jeff Gordon, 24, moved up the block. He just turned under him, brought the eight car with him, takes the lead. I now we'll get some bump drafting going on right here. Earnhardt on the bumper of the 17, Matt Kenseth, pushes him down the racetrack, and the 24 is going to lose some spots. Matt? Bill, that's exactly what Steve Meal just told Junior. He says, man, they are blocking already. I mean, after all, it's the end of the race. Well, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. Only 174 <laughs> more laps to go. 26 of McMurray, the 24 of Gordon, chasing the 20 of Tony Stewart, Allen. Yeah, Bill is, uh, I don't think, much disputing the fact that Tony Stewart has been the dominant driver on this speedway lately. He dominated this race a year ago, didn't win, but he led over half of it. He dominated the race here last July. Tony Stewart trying to get to the front and maybe dominate today. Marty? Well, Matt Kenseth was trying to hang on the lead, but with no drafting partners, he's going to go back pretty quick and try and squeeze his way in line. He told me he didn't know what to expect from this car. He said we were really good when it was hot and sunny. Obviously, today, very cool and cloudy, and Tony Stewart about loses it, guys. And McMurray jumps up on the outside trying to help his teammate. That 26 car in the 17, they are teammates out of the Jack Roush table. And I didn't see the 20 car get sideways, but obviously, he has fallen back from the eight. Let's watch as these cars come off turn two. Ever see Tony Stewart? Yeah, he oh, did. boy, did he ever. <laughs> oh, what a great job by Tony. 
Here's another look. Looks like he just got close to the 17. When you're that close to another car on the high side going through the corner, you will lose the downforce on the rear of your car. It actually feels like somebody's jacking up the rear of the car in the corner, and it just feels like you're on ice, and that's exactly what happened to Tony Stewart. Now they forced the 20 car, Tony Stewart, up high off the bottom, and he does not particularly like it up there. He is a bottom feeder, loves the bottom of the racetrack, and he goes for the lead with Jamie McMurray pushing him. A lap and a half after he almost crashes, he has the lead. Tony Stewart has had many heartbreaking moments here at Daytona. He won the July race here, but has never won the Daytona 500. Today is his chance to add that to his resume to go along with his win last year at the Brickyard 400. You're watching NASCAR on NBC. 31 laps are complete in the Daytona 500. Tony Stewart continues to lead. Take a look at our AutoZone in the zone drivers. Here at Daytona in the 500, Kurt Busch three top five finishes in five races. Tony Stewart with the three straight top tens, but no Daytona 500 win. Jimmy Johnson has also run well in this race, looking for his first Daytona 500 win. I want to point out under the last caution that Jeff Green was the lucky dog. That got him back on the lead lap. 42 of the 43 cars are on the lead lap. Martin Truex Jr., who brushed the wall, is the only car one lap down. Let's take you through the field, starting with Alan Best. Well, Bill, we saw the uh, story of Tony Stewart's race so far just a minute ago when he just about lost control off the turn two and then came back a lap and a half later to take the lead. Crew Chief Greg Zipidelli called Tony on the radio when he took the lead and said, we'll take that. And Tony said, I figured you might be pleased. Marty? Jamie McMurray right now running second. Allen in the car that Kurt Busch used to finish second with here last year. Because his car is just a little bit too tight right now. He's more concerned about the water temperature. Right behind him, his teammate, Matt Kenseth, who's had his car also too tight, which means it doesn't want to turn in the corner. So when they pit next time for the 17 car, half a pound on left rear try trying to loosen it up. Alan? Racers use two words, tight and loose, to describe the way their car handles. Tight means the front end's not gripping. Loose means the back end's not gripping. Most expected a tight race car today. Jeff Gordon just called in, said his car's beginning to get loose. There's a car off the Kyle pace Pitt. back there. Ka no, no. Uh, uh, Jeremy, May Jeremy Mayfield in the 19 car. Looks like he made contact with somebody. Yes, there's another car that's slow around here someplace. Is it Greg Biffle right behind him? No. Biffle's trying to get around. Mayfield's trying to get to pit road. He's clearly had contact with another car. Matt? And they're asking Biffle, did he bounce off the wall or off another car? Biffle thinks he does have a tire going down, but he has been bitten by that in the past when he thought he either had a tire going down or a loose wheel and then didn't. He's right now trying to feel it out. Well, I don't think they made uh, contact with the 19. We'll see if we can see what happened with uh, Jeremy Mayfield. Way up high, and he's got that Mike Wallace did the same exact thing that Vickers did to uh, Martin Truex. He came off of two loose, and he squeezed right in front of her up into Jeremy Mayfield. And then and Mayfield came down and hit and did get the 16 ball. car, yeah. So Mayfield got a piece of the wall and a piece of Biffle. And some good driving by the guys behind that to stay out of trouble. Marty? And when Mayfield came to pit road, Bill, he said that was Mike Wallace who ran into me, as you guys just saw in the replay. Left side damage for Mayfield. It was left side tires only, and they tried to pull out that damage. But obviously, you see the smoke. They didn't get it all. Matt? Marty, they are still trying to figure out whether Biffle has a tire going down. A lot of conversation on the radio. The team right now watching our broadcast video trying to see if indeed he does have a tire going down. And they want to see the right side of the car. I don't see any smoke coming from the right front, which is a good sign. And usually that's that's what you'll see when the car's fenders are laying in on the tire. So, so far, it looks pretty good. He got a lot of the damage in the door, which is okay. The fenders look fairly clean. Both right, right side. On, uh, right behind the door. I mean, the tire on the door, guys. Going to work on the right front fender a little bit. Still inside. And both right side tires, the yellow that says Goodyear is gone. So that means that both tires have made contact. But I don't, I agree with you. I don't think they're flat. Matt, upon further review, they give a thumbs up on the tires. If you're looking at our video, 
And Biffle slowly trying to work his way back to the front. All these teams on their pit boxes on pit road have satellite receivers and are able to watch the telecast in real time and often use the video to their advantage. We're seeing some problems off of turn two and the way the wind is blowing that's where I thought there may be some issues BP off of turn two because that wind comes right across and all of these cars are 3,500 pounds. Sometimes they feel like okay. there's okay. no weight on them whatsoever. And Jeremy Mayfield has to come back in because looks like the left front tire is now flat after rubbing that fender. Marty. Built uh, BP exactly right. Uh, he came on the radio said uh, he's still talking right now left uh, front is flat and they're going to come to pit road. They obviously have to get some more damage cleared away from that left front tire because something is cutting into that tire from the damage they got earlier on the racetrack. In a tough speed weeks for Everham Motorsports. One other car Scott Riggs did not make the Daytona 500 and now trouble early for Jeremy Mayfield. Yeah Jeremy's going to go a few laps down. He's already three laps down. Be tough to overcome today. Tony Stewart continues to lead. He's got Jamie McMurray on his bumper in the Daytona 500. Here in the Daytona 500, Tony Stewart continues to lead. Jeremy Mayfield has had problems and has been bound pit road several times. Now scored five laps down from the leaders. And up front, yeah, these I guys are happy. I think they're content really to stay in line right now and the longer these guys up front can just stay in line. First there was 15 cars in this line and always the back car in the draft starts to lose the draft and that's what you're seeing. All these guys are starting to drop off where well, you're only going to have six or seven cars on a breakaway. As long as these guys stay in line they'll break away from everybody. Now if there's a group behind them that line up and there's 10 or 12 cars they'll chase this group back down. So I think these guys right here are just content on staying alive. Now there's something you didn't see very much in the past. <laughs> the 12 and 2 working together. Those are team cars out of Penske Racing Organization. 12 is Ryan Newman, 2, Kurt Busch. And they're gaining on this top five. The more friends you have, the faster you go. Right. And then you see there's another group behind them with about six or seven cars. If those guys will all stay in line, they'll eventually get up to that group. Matt. Bill Ryan told me he worked a lot with his new teammate Kurt Busch in practice so he knows that they can team up well. The one thing he was hoping that there would be some side by side racing up front. The Indian file racing has kind of hindered their progress up to the front but they were slowly reeling those guys in. Dave. Matt, right behind him in the two is Kurt Busch. His crew chief Roy McCauley told me this morning that he thinks working together right now is a strong point for Penske Racing. He says the crew chiefs have worked together for quite some time, share a lot of information. The drivers, even though they have different styles, that's a good thing because they've both been successful and they can learn from each other. You're right, Dave, and a lot of changes at that two-team Kurt Busch taking over that ride from Rusty Wallace, who retired following last season. Rusty and Ryan didn't exactly have the same philosophies when it came to setups or racing styles did not work together very much on the racetrack or dinner <laughs> or choice in cars movies. or movies or <laughs> and not only is the driver different on the two car I think that everybody on the team is different except one person just about yeah you need a race program just for that team in itself coming up on pit stops they might come under green we'll step out if anything happens we'll break in Tony Stewart leads the Daytona 500. Under caution here at Daytona. The caution flag just came out moments ago. Jeff Gordon and Tony Stewart have both been in the wall. You know what? It, first, here's the pass for the lead. See McMurray going down on the bottom of Tony Stewart. Okay, now Stewart slides up the racetrack like, like he almost got loose. Gordon goes to the inside. Now Gordon's going to slide up in front of Tony Stewart. What I don't understand is why he actually almost ran or squeezed Stewart in, which we've seen in turn two a lot. We've seen that happen. This is the third time we've seen it happen today. And you mentioned the wind. When that wind blows a cor across the, around, around that corner, it's very difficult to turn that car back into the wind. Now, Stewart didn't give Gordon any room on this deal. I mean, Stewart looks like he could have checked up a little bit and give the 24 room, and they both probably would have got through that corner without running into the wall but that didn't happen and now they both have damage I got that right rear pretty good Jeff Gordon's radio Gordon a three-time winner of the Daytona 500 comes off a very disappointing 2005 season Tony Stewart in the 20 car is the defending series champion 
But it looks to me like that both those cars have enough damage that winning the Daytona 500 is a thing of the past. It's going to take a lot of time to, to fix those cars. And that's just too early in the race. You could cut a guy a little bit of slack. I think Stewart could have cut Jeff Gordon a little bit of slack there, and everything would have been okay. Jamie McMurray is the race leader. This comes just before the field was talking about having green flag pit stops, Marty. You guys going to say, Bill, meantime, out of that scrum, McMurray winds up being the leader, and they're already thinking championship. They told him you have your five bonus points. Car a little bit tight for Jamie. They're going to put a pound in the right rear tire. Alan? Steve Letarte, the crew chief for Jeff Gordon, has put a helmet on. That's him standing upright with an arm up to the radio headset by the right rear tire. He's looking on to try and assess what the damage is. He is walking to the front, making a walk around on the car. He's uh, making calls to his team about what they'll need to fix, Matt. The 26 already down and away, as well as the 12 of Newman. Newman's car, a tick on the tight side. He will win the battle off pit road. They made a chassis adjustment. Hit pit road in third. A.B., what about Stewart? Yeah, Tony Stewart, his uh, team's got some damage there to repair as well. They were trying to get a good rundown from Tony about what the problems were on the car. You see the crew still working around the right rear fender to get that clear of the tire and make sure that's not cutting into that good gear when Tony's out there at top speed. They also want to check the suspension and make sure it's all still square. Tony says the steering was pretty square coming in, which is good. That means they perhaps didn't damage the right front suspension very much. But the thing is, well, they are working on the right front fender as well. So the fender, the right front fenders are the problem. We'll get an update on Tony Stewart and Jeff Gordon when we come back to Daytona. The field is coming to get the green flag in the Daytona 500 for a restart on lap 51. Ryan Newman is the race leader. Matt Kenseth is second. Jamie McMurray had trouble on his pit stop. He restarts at the rear of the field. The 20 of Tony Stewart, the 24 of Jeff Gordon. A lot of work on pit road. Yeah, we just talked about how important these bodies were. Well, they just ruined hundreds of hours of work just in that one corner. As a matter of fact, the 2448, the decals that go on the side of the car, they painted all those things on rather than have a decal that protruded out into the air. A decal that's a few thousands of an inch thick. Stewart restarted 38th. Jeff Gordon restarted 41st. Jamie McMurray, who was the leader coming to pit road, restarted 39th. It can happen. Just all you have to do is that one more time. Jeff Gordon trying to make up ground. Here's the conversation he had with his crew while we were under caution. I, I'm going to put blame on both of us on that one. Uh, you know, I, I, I dove underneath there. I got tight. He didn't want to give it up either. Matt? And, and what Jeff Gordon said, as he's coming off the corner, he couldn't turn the car. He got tight. He went up the hill right in front of Tony Stewart. And as he said, Tony did, and you saw it, made the point, Tony did not want to give up that spot. And they both ran the wall off, too. Alan, you got some more? I just talked to Steve Letarte, Jeff Gordon's crew chief. The car is towed out. That means the front wheels aren't aligned the way that they want them to. They feel like they're in decent shape as far as the rest of the car. So what they're hoping for is another caution and another opportunity to come down pit road and fix it. And Alan, Gordon told his crew he's going to try and make that up for them, right? Yeah, Jeff, uh, Jeff basically apologized on the team radio, said, I will make this up to you. And they told him, basically, you just drive and we'll get the car straight and we'll keep going. And, you know, win this race. No, no sweat on their part. It's still early, right? <laughs> yeah, yes, it really is. is. They got plenty of time, and if they do catch the cautions right, they can get that car to get the toe fixed. Uh, they're gonna have to chase the chassis a little bit, depending on how the body reacts to the downforce situation, because obviously the body is not perfect. It is very overcast here at Daytona today. You can tell from our pictures, it's difficult to even see the backstretch from our broadcast location, having trouble with our helicopter as well to keep it up above the minimum ceiling. And Matt, there's even a little mist in the air maybe. That's what Dale Earnhardt Jr. says. He said, man, it is misting out here. Besides that, they're also battling a breeze kind of in the turn two area. Bobby Labonte reported on that as well, playing habit for some of the drivers off turn two. Martin Truex Jr. was the lucky dog under the previous caution. He currently runs in the 38th position. That means he gets one lap back. It is an award to the first car not on the lead lap when the caution comes out because the field is frozen. Check this outside line. 
Matt Kenseth, the 17 car, is as strong as anyone we've seen out there today. Right now, Kurt Busch trying to push Ryan Newman further in front. Jimmy Johnson in the 48. You know, those guys seem to be content to run in line, but as soon as he got rid of Tony Stewart and Jeff Gordon, everyone wants to lead again. I think that's when the race might have started, Benny, because two of the favorites are back in the back of the pack, and the eight really hasn't been as strong as a lot of guys thought. All these guys started licking their chops all of a sudden <laughs> because they said, well, we got two of the strongest cars have just had trouble. What, what's Tony saying about the 20 there, uh, AB? Uh, I just talked to Greg Zipidelli, Wally, crew chief for Tony Stewart. He said they got all the right side sheet metal. The steering wheel appears to be straight, but they hadn't gotten the opportunity to check the toe in on the car. They think they're in decent shape, except for the aerodynamics. They did poke a hole in the nose of the machine that they'll have to patch if they get another caution. You know how important those uh, front front bumpers are, Wally, for aero and handling purposes. Yeah, and, and a driver, once you bump these cars and it knocks the toe off, you can feel that as a driver. You can feel the steering wheel. You've got the steering wheel straight when you're going down the straightaway. Once you run into somebody or somebody runs into you, all of a sudden you're holding the steering wheel at a different angle to keep the car going straight. So you know you bent something or knocked something out of whack. That can be fixed if you haven't bent it too much during a pit stop under caution and not lose a lap here at Daytona. Dave, a couple of Penske cars up front. And Bill, you talked about two good cars not being contenders right now. Kurt Busch said this on the radio during the caution. Hey, we've got two good guys out. Everyone out here is going to turn into cannibals. Brickhouse, <laughs> that's his spotter. He said, Brickhouse, we got to be smooth. Watch out for me. I'll tell you what, that, that mist seems to be getting more than mist. Be quiet. Oh, sorry. Did BP say something? I didn't hear him. I didn't hear him. Is he even in the room? Marty? Well, Matt Kenseth is trying to make that outside line work. Kyle Busch pushing him, and you guys mentioned Matt doing awfully well out there as he goes into the lead. His car actually, believe it or not, guys, was loose on that last run. First car I've heard loose on pit road. Half pound of the right rear tire, three quarters of a round of wedge in the right rear, and obviously they got it right, didn't they? Yeah, I, if you can have the car a little bit loose or just on the other side a little loose and just take a little bit of that out, conditions are perfect for that kind of a setup right now. He's got the five Ooh. car behind him, Got to be careful Kyle doesn't get too close to the bumper of Matt Kenseth in the 17 car in the corner. Because if, if Matt is a little bit loose, that's just going to make the problem 10 times worse in the corners. So it's okay if Kyle goes up and hits him in the bumper on the straightaways. Just wants to give him a little room in the corners. Matt Kenseth out in front in the Daytona 500. Troubles for the 20 of Tony Stewart and the 24 of Jeff Gordon. But a long way to go. You know all that stuff about people being patient and waiting until the end of the race? Forget about it. Kyle Busch in the five in the middle. Mark Martin, the triple eight car on the inside. They make contact. Kyle Busch almost goes up into Casey Mears on the outside in that dark car. And meanwhile, they're lined up three by three behind them. And it has gotten very racy and a little foggy here at Daytona. <laughs> Check out Tony Stewart, the 20 car. He is working his way through the field. Last time by, he was 16th. And folks, when I say aggressive, that's an understatement. <laughs> Might be inspired, Alan. Uh, you think? <laughs> there and he goes. Now, yeah. How about three wide underneath his Joe Gibbs racing teammate, Denny Hamlin, in that 11. Tony Stewart hasn't said much on the radio at all since they've gone back to racing. I think his actions on the track speak for themselves. The fact that his car can't be in all that bad a shape and that he is determined to get back to the front and have a shot to win this race. Jeff Burton was our pole sitter. Has moved his way forward after dropping back. We've been working our singular race talk poll here. Which driver will benefit the most from his new team in 2006? Here are the four we selected that you can vote on. You can do that by texting the word race to 191 on your singular wireless phone or go to nascar.com and we'll have the results later. Wally is ineligible to vote. You know, I might have misspoken or spoke a little bit too soon on Tony Stewart's chances of winning the Daytona 500 in that 20 car. Damn. Is coming through that field. When something like that happens to you, Benny and Wally, you and you believe you might be at fault. You know you've let a lot of people down, and you're already driving hard, but you find something within you to drive a little harder. Well, yes, I think I think that's 
you know, in that situation, those guys are probably pretty mad at themselves right now. And, and obviously, you know, you're still going to drive just as hard as you were before. You're hoping that the car, the biggest thing is making sure that the car is capable of what it was doing before you hit the wall. That's the thing you feel bad about is you want to make sure that you didn't screw the car up. So right now, Stewart's giving that car everything he can give it. Make sure that next time they come in for pit stop, they don't have to make a big change. And if they do, Tony will tell them. I think the car is probably as as uh, it was as fast before as it is now. He just been much more aggressive with the car than he was before. Alan, what's he said on the radio? What do you think? Well, first of all, Wally, I don't think it's himself that he's mad at. <laughs> if you know where I'm going with that. And and second of all, this is the part now in this run on this set of tires that they'll start to get concerned about. Any handling deficiencies that your car has are going to show up after 15 laps. That's when the tires start to give up the grip that they've had when they're brand new. So now we're going to see if Tony Stewart's got anything he needs to compensate for on the next pit stop because now we're beginning to get to that point where they've run 15 laps on this set of tires. We heard Jeff Gordon say, I'll take 50% of the blame and pass 50% of the blame. What Alan's saying is that Tony wants to pass 100% of the blame to the 24. Agree. Yeah. That's what he said. That's what he said, but like I said, all he had to do was just cut him some slack and he wouldn't be in this predicament right now. Which is pretty much what Gordon said on the radio. Matt, how about Earnhardt? Bill, the good news for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Recall back on Thursday in his qualifying race, he had some major right front tire wear issues. Now, the tires that came off his car on the last stop, they looked great. They told him that he says, all right, now I know I can push it a little bit harder. The car, though, still pushing. I means it just won't turn in the corner when he wants it to. But his spotter, Steve Meal, said, look, just to let you know, the 20 is now just two cars back, and he is moving really fast through the pack. Alan? Kevin Harvick, we haven't really talked about him since we saw him get that bag removed from the on-roof TV camera on the pace laps. Kevin, in the early going of the race, complained that his car just didn't seem to want to run. It didn't have the horsepower feel that it had uh, in practice yesterday. When he came down pit road, they were looking to add some tape to one of the oil cooler openings on the left side to get the engine oil temperature up higher than it was on the car. Maybe they've uh, boosted that horsepower by just enough to make him a contender. Jamie McMurray, who had a problem with a jack on the pit stop and had to give up the lead, make a second pit stop under the caution, restarted 39th, has worked his way into the middle of this pack in 14th spot. Alan, what they were doing with the oil, the hotter they get the oil, the thinner it becomes and less resistance that the moving parts have inside the engine. Matt Kenseth, Kurt Busch, Ryan Newman, Kevin Harvick, Jimmy Johnson up front will go through the field when we come back to Daytona. Still green here at Daytona. Matt Kenseth continues to lead. Log on to NBCSports.com for much more on the Daytona 500. There's commentary from Alan Bestwick and Benny Parsons as well as BP's weekly Nextel Cup race previews. I can't miss item. It's all at NBCSports.com. You got your preview for California done yet? No, not yet. Got to wait till this race is over. That's a good idea. Okay. Throughout the season, we take you through the field. At these restrictor play races, it's more like around the field. But we'll start with the 17 car, Matt Kenseth. And here's Marty. No getting around the fact that Matt Kenseth is the man up front. And the, earlier we told you he was loose. Now we say the car is tight. And I asked Robbie Reiser, how do you go from loose to tight so quickly? He said, mainly because of the mist out there. The track is a lot slicker. So now Matt is a little bit too tight. Dave? Kurt Busch and the two car continuing to run in the second position. The car was just a little bit free at the start of that run. Wanted to turn a little too easily. He said, right now, though, we're sitting pretty. I like where I am, Matt. Dave, his teammate Ryan Newman in the number 12, right in his mirror now. On the first stop, no changes for Newman. They made a slight chassis adjustment to fix the tight condition. On the second stop, Allen, he says he is flat-footing it through turns one and two. Uh, that's a good sign for him. Kevin Harvick having good signs as well. He's moved his way up to the fourth position now in the race after starting in the second half of the field. The other reason for putting that tape on was to help get more front downforce on the car and help it turn better in the corners. Kevin running in fourth. Matt. Dale Jr. has tried up top. He's tried the middle, and now he's on the bottom, still fighting a terrible push in that eight car. A.B.? 
Jimmy Johnson says his car is not heading to his liking right now, though it's not bad. He liked it better when he was running behind Jeff Gordon versus Dale Earnhardt Jr. He also likes it better on the bottom of the track, says he just can't get the car to work right up in the top lane, Marty. Mark Martin's just trying to cling to that front draft as best he can. About 10 laps from pit stops, Alan. Mark says they need to take a big swing at it on the next stop. His car just will not turn, meaning it's too tight. He wants two rounds of wedge in the right rear on that next stop. Elliot Sadler has lost that front pack but leading that second pack his car tighter than what he needs he says the car was loose earlier on but now it's too tight jamie mcmurray from the back to the front he said he was a little worried he would quote use up his stuff getting to the front and burn up those tires but he's done a good job working his way back into the top 10 that rounding out the top 10 is the famous 43 bobby labani a great race going so far tuesday before they came down to speed weeks a new attitude they handed out t-shirts and it said new attitude on the back it said bring it and that's exactly what bobby's doing now the car almost perfect Dave Casey Kane's team made no chassis adjustments on the last stop he reported on lap 70 however that his car has become very loose into the corner he said but let's leave it for right now let's not overreact as for the 31 car of Jeff Burton the pole sitter today he has made mistakes on two pit stops he confessed to his team first stop stalled leaving second stop hit it too close to the wall that has cost him positions on the racetrack he is racing hard to get back to the front five car going high now letting Tony Stewart get by that's Kyle Busch after lap 51 restart they were hit fixed a tight condition they thought but he just radioed in 20 laps later we're still tight as a son of a gun well, Tony Stewart just moving up uh, another spot to 13th. He took the restart in 32nd place after the long pit stop to repair the damage of the earlier crash with Jeff Gordon at lap 47. You might think Tony would have a lot to talk about on the radio. The only thing he's complaining about is the weather. Marty? Alan Sterling Marlin has had a very strong car today. You got the feeling he's just kind of waiting back there to make his move. The car was tight earlier. Now the car's been a little bit too loose for Sterling. He wants him to pull the left front fender on the next stop. A little worried it may rub later on, Alan. Well, Jeff Gordon dropped all the way back to 37th spot with his long pit stop for damage repair. He's picked his way through to 28th, although he's about to lose one of those back to Kyle Petty. Jeff talking about still needing some work done. The uh, toe out still a problem for him. The uh, handling falling off the farther they run on this set of tires. Thanks, guys. 42 of 43 cars on the lead lap. Pit stops coming when we return to the Daytona 500 on NBC. Oh. A multi-car crash has just occurred in turn three. Kyle Petty is involved. J.J. Yaley in the 18. That's Carl Edwards in the 99. Someone spun going in turn three and backed across the racetrack in front of all these cars and left them no place to go. Might have been Kyle. I'm not sure exactly who it was. Here are the replays. We're under caution at Daytona. No tire on that left rear VP, the 45 car. Let's see. There's uh, Jeff. Oh, wow. Jeff Green breaks loose through the grass, then up the track. Kind of a strange crash, really. Jonina check. Almost, in, I mean, right in the door. Looked like Schrader did a good job getting around it in the 21. And left those guys with absolutely no place to go. And we see what happened to the left rear of the 45. The 99 car just knocked off the tire and the quarter panel of the left rear. into Kyle Petty. Not sure why Jeff Green lost it there going into the corner. Kind of a, it looked a little bit strange. I couldn't put my finger on why he lost it before he even got to the corner. Yeah, I think we probably need to back up just a little bit and see if we can have some idea what happened. I'm not sure exactly. I'm like you. Didn't look right. And Dave Burns had just told us Carl Edwards was running back there because he wasn't very happy with the way his car was handling wouldn't turn. It won't turn now. Won't go. Third caution of the day, and once again, it comes just before these guys were thinking they might have to make a green flag pit stop. Corvette pace car has the field in tow. Matt Kenseth, the race leader. Okay, we broke out a commercial to show you that. We'll finish that break, come back for pit stops at Daytona.
Pit road is open. The 24 has been on and off of pit road with a tire problem. We'll update that in a second. The leaders are in their pits, Marty. Leader Matt Kenseth, Bill, said his car was just a little bit tight on that run. They've been loose today, also tight. They're going to put a pound in the right rear tire. That's it. Dave? Kurt Busch gives up second position. They made an adjustment before that made the car too loose. They put that adjustment back, plus four fresh tires. Alan? Well, Tony Stewart, his crew chief, Greg Zipidelli, asked, do you want any changes? He said, no. Just put four tires on it. We're pretty fast. Matt? Dale Jr. sure wants significant changes. Already made a wedge. Now going to make... Left side tire change, a little bit of trouble on the left front, and he is away. They also made an air pressure adjustment in the right rear. A mad dash off of pit road. Alan, how about Gordon? Well, the reason he came down pit road the first time, Bill, was because he had a flat right front tire. So they wanted to get that changed. They also want to get a look at the suspension components under that right front tire to make sure he didn't grind anything off coming around the track on the flat tire. So they're going to bring the car back down pit road. They're going to check that right side suspension. They're going to come around to the left, and crew chief Steve Letard's going to crawl under the car and have a look at uh, the left side and see what they might be able to do to help this car for later. Okay, Alan, thanks a lot. Now, here's why we're under caution. The 66 just looked like it kind of turned to the right and drove into Terry Labonte, and, uh, but I mean, I still don't see what caused that wreck. I don't either. I, I really don't know. I know what caused it for these guys, yeah. but I wasn't, I don't sure what caused it for Jeff Green. And I'm assuming that the 24 car now is behind this and is going through and runs over debris or. Watch him, he's just coming into the right-hand side of the picture. Right behind Kenny Schrader, the 21 car. Comes down on the apron. You can see the debris all over the place, through the grass. Yeah, he could have very well just picked up some debris, ran it over, and got that flat tire. He's already been to his pit stall and heads back out. So under caution here at Daytona with 119 laps to go. And he's already had one throw ride today. And he was flying, too, yes, when he, he did. He didn't like either of them. Crews go to work in the garage. I don't think Kyle invited him either. <laughs> Watch that. Right in the window of Kyle Petty. Take a look at the Craftsman pit summary. I'll tell you that Jeremy Mayfield was the lucky dog. He gets a lap back, awarded that by NASCAR. Matt Kenseth. Held his crew held serve. Comes in first, goes out first. How about Bush? He goes back to fifth. And Harvick gains that one spot up to second. Robbie Reiser, the crew chief for Matt Kenseth, kept that pit crew intact during the offseason. That was hard to do. A lot of teams wanted those guys, but Robbie kept his pit crew, his over the wall guys together, had a good stop, held on to the lead. Field coming to get the green flag, completing lap 84 of 200 in the Daytona 500. Spread out on that restart, Benny. Boy, they sure did. We watched the restart. Check with Marty. And Carl Edwards has surveyed the damage on his 99 car. And uh, did you have time to slow down them down for that one, Carl? Yeah, that's, you know, I apologize to Kyle Petty and all his fans and his uh, sponsors. Could have done a better job of slowing down. I saw Green, though, slide with such force up the track. I knew all those guys were wrecking, and they were going to be coming down. So I went to the bottom, and I got Kyle. And uh, that wasn't Kyle's fault. He did a great job to avoid it. I didn't do the, the best job I could have. And for that, I apologize to my crew and everybody. But oh, well, we'll go to Fontana. But uh, that's very frustrating. There's some heavy right front damage on the 99 car. And uh, doubtful they will get back in. But they are certainly going to effort doing so. That was a class act on his part to apologize. It said, look, I could have slowed down a little bit quicker. So maybe next time he will. Kevin Harvick grabbed the lead. J.J. Yaley in the 18 car treated and relieved, uh, released from the infield care center. You wouldn't expect anything but that from Carl. No, really. Although he was frustrated, uh, I believe, in the Bud shootout. <laughs> <laughs> Not at a fellow driver, but yes. Oh, well, here we go. Junior's going for the lead. He goes by Kenseth, goes into second, goes for the lead, moves up oh, the racetrack. Wow. Oh, Nemechek, that 0-1 car right in his way. And that was nice of Kevin Harvick <laughs> to give Junior the room. He didn't have to do that either. But nobody's going to give him any back. Nobody's going to pay for it. He's going to lose about maybe seven or eight, nine spots here. And you can imagine how the fans feel. Dale Earnhardt Jr. back in front in Daytona. 
now have they adjusted the chassis properly on this eight car that he's able to stay in front it seems like they're gaining on it pp seems like he's really good at after a pit stop then the car fades but it went longer this last time so it seems like that they are catching up with it is that right matt well and that's exactly what junior said in the last caution he felt like they've really made a lot of gains on that red number eight on the tight condition, slowly getting it where he wants it to be. In fact, Steve Meal, when you saw him make that great move down in three and four, said, boys, that's another one for the highlight film. Junior back out front. Hey, Matt, this weather has to be a curveball for these guys. It was 80 degrees and sunny for that final practice. Absolutely. Bobby Labonte said it earlier that the car was just way too tight due to the weather conditions, but he has dialed his race car in running in the 10th position but Steve Meal also said you know those days at Pocono in the morning when the fog is out and it's a little too early to get out on the racetrack I feel like we're at Pocono because <laughs> yeah. it is foggy it does look like Pocono and it doesn't feel like Florida does it Tony Stewart trying to work his way back up through the field. Let's check in the garage and update on Kyle Petty. And Bill, the left side of Kyle Petty's car is just simply gone. Carl Edwards said that was his fault, and he apologized to you, Kyle. What was your take on it? No, I, I, don't, I don't think it was Carl's fault. Carl and I got together, obviously, after somebody else got, somebody just run all over there. Poor Jeff Green. He's just out there minding his own business and gets run over. Uh, and then it's a typical Daytona Talladega type track where the wreck's happening up in front, but you get run over from behind. And that's the way it is. You think you got it dodged? Just a bad day for the Wells Fargo Dodge today. You know what I mean? So, uh, hey, the first of many. We got a lot more races to go. George <laughs> Gal told me, he said, I had a, I'm a, an, an eye full of that 99 car. That's all I know. That whole Petty Enterprises group, as we talked about in the Through the Field, is really fired up about this season. And he said that someone ran over Jeff Green. Well, Jeff Green was his driver last year. He's no longer in the 43, but Kyle uh, felt sorry for him. Petty Enterprises has Kyle's car, the 45 and the 43, driven this year by Bobby Labonte up front. Kurt Busch is trying to push Matt Kenseth past Dale Earnhardt Jr. He's done a pretty good job of it, too. Junior needs... Jimmy Johnson, that 48 car, to get right up on his bumper in order to help him. There's too much gap in between those two cars, so they need to run tighter on the bottom in order to hang on to lead. Oh, we go three wide there. Bobby Labonte, the 43, ducks underneath the M&M car of Elliott Sadler and takes that spot, takes Tony Stewart with him. Want to find out what happened to Jeff Green? We'll wait. Yeah, I would, I would like to know exactly what happened to Jeff Green. Okay, we'll watch this. Marty will ask him. Uh, yeah, you hear a lot of hammers back here in the background, and... Uh, Jeff, what happened to start all that? Uh, I think that that's 88 that. Uh, we were, Kyle Petty and myself were really working good on the bottom. It's kind of a, uh, a unnecessary evil, I guess, because we was working the bottom so good, nobody would go with us. Got up on the inside of the 88, got up on the inside of the Terry Labonte. Down the back straight away, 88 turned me in the right rear and turned me in the fence. I, I know I gave him plenty of room because I was on the inside of Terry and I wasn't crowding him, so. I don't know, it's just like a rookie move, but Blame rookies all you want. That's a veteran. He shouldn't have done that. So just tore up my good, my best by car. It's best, op, the best opportunity I've ever had to, to run and have a competitive car here. And these best by guys gave me that. And they took, and Dale Jarrett took it away. So it's pretty disappointing with him right now. And Bill, another caution on the race track. This one for debris on the back stretch, Marty. That usually happens after we have these wrecked <laughs> race cars. And some of them, they try to repair them. And sometimes those pieces fall off. Tape doesn't stick as well. There we see. There we see the that, debris. That looks like a uh, spring rubber. Sure there. does. Joe Nemechek will get the lucky dog. He gets a lap back. The highest scored car not running on the lead lap. Now, let's look at the 66 and the 88 when the caution came out for the Jeff Green wreck. That's Dale Jarrett. <clears throat> okay, we see the 88 is on the outside of the 66. What Jeff is saying that somehow the left front of Dale Jarrett's car makes contact with his right rear. The angle we had, it's impossible to see. That, but that makes sense. Yeah. Now that you look at it that way, that's exactly what happened. Kyle had a good view of it, and obviously Jeff felt it. And that led to the wild ride for Carl Edwards. There's the UPS Ford of Dale Jarrett. Pit road will be open this time. But how many of these lead lap cars will give up their track position? Well, if they don't come, the guys behind them will. Yeah. 
So pit road's going to be busy. The question is how busy? Working. There we can see the left front fender on the 88 car. And, you know, there's not really any visible damage. Yeah, you can but see yeah, right yeah. there that yeah. decal, BP. Yeah, right where it says the cleave out. You, you can see, see it. right there. There's some rubbing going on. And it doesn't take much. It doesn't take anything here. I'm telling you <laughs> what, you're, these cars are on the verge of wrecking every lap anyway. And when, you, when you're driving these cars at this racetrack, it just feels like if you if you look at the guy's fender the wrong way, you can make him get sideways. And in the Bank of America countdown to green, we talked about how air can play such a huge factor in that kind of a situation. Well, so can your left front bumper <laughs> into somebody's rear quarter panel. All right, are they going to give up that Good track tires, position? Looks like we're all coming down pit road. Marty? Well, Matt Kenza said, Robbie Reiser, you're, crew, you're the crew chief. You're making the decision on this one. I'm not going to. The leader hits pit road. It will be two tires only. Right side for Matt. Said the car was a little tight on that run, but he was not unhappy with it. Dave? Crew chief, I'm thinking about no tires, fuel only, or two. Kurt Busch, I'm all about two. No changes to the chassis. Two right side tires. Alan? Jimmy Johnson made the call from the car. Two tires. He's gone. Matt? They're making a chassis adjustment for Junior. Let's see if he does two. They dropped the jacket. He is away. A.B., what about the 20? Tony Stewart's team getting four tires on their stop. We'll go back and double check for sure. Wow. But Stewart heading out onto the racetrack. That about was sixth in line. Great pit stop from Tony Stewart's team if he took four. There's one car stalled on pit road. Mac Kenseth had to go through the grass to avoid contact on pit road. Leading the pack under caution, the high-performance 505-horsepower Chevy Corvette. We'd like to take you on board, but because our chopper can't get high enough, we can't get you a signal worth putting on the air. That car looks pretty good from right here. A beautiful car, 505 horsepower, yeah. huh? Yeah. Was Jay Leno to move over? Of course, this is, <laughs> this is Brett Bodine, the normal pace car driver. Are you saying Jay Leno is not normal? <laughs> no, the fellow who drives the pace the car usual, each and every next the regular pace, pace car driver. Yes. Jay Leno, the honorary pace car driver here. Dave, what are you working on? Well, Bill, you know, we've uh, given you a couple of replays in the booth today, courtesy of the truck, but down here on pit road, fans are looking over the NASCAR Nextel fan view more and more. This is a little device that Nextel has put together to get the fans a closer view of the action down here on pit road or up in the stands, and frankly, I'm getting some very good use out of it today in the 500. It is a television. You can see the video replay of everything happening on the big Nextel screens around the track. It is also a stats generator, and you can keep real-time stats while you're watching the race on your favorite driver on the whole field, or you can even compare drivers one to another. Also, it has audio replay, which means if I miss a guy and I need to get some information, I can listen to the last three minutes of their conversation over the scanner. And it's also a priority scanner, so you don't need to carry a scanner around anymore. You can carry NASCAR Nextel fan view. It's really cool. They're running them to you today. 50 bucks a day, 70 bucks for the weekend. If that's too much, get a couple of friends. You can link your headsets together. It's very cool, Bill. All right, Dave. Thanks a lot. Just send a couple up the, uh, a couple of those up here, would you, buddy? Looks like he would have linked up Matt or Marty or somebody on his. No, Dave's not going to. He got the first one. He's not sharing. I got you. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, earlier we had our singular race talk poll question for you. Oh, did we now? Yes, we did. And what about and it? Later on, we're going to show you the results. Okay. <laughs> okay, on this Corvette pace car. you gotta, you got to be careful with your drafting partner, don't you, Wally? <laughs> you just got hung out the drive, <laughs> Yes, <buddy>. I did. <laughs> we see the lights are out atop the pace car, which means when they go by the eight car, Dale Earnhardt Jr. will get the green flag, and we'll go back racing again. I want to point out Tony Stewart had uh, took two tires on his stop. See back there in that orange car behind Mark Martin. In front of Mark is Kurt Busch. Then it's Matt Kenseth. Then Jimmy Johnson runs second to Dale Earnhardt Jr. Green flag, green flag. Five laps from halfway. Well, Jimmy Johnson got a good start. So did Kenseth. These guys, that's just a good opportunity to try to make a pass when you're going up through the gears. Oh, Johnson got a tough break. He dives to the outside. Kenseth wanted to make it three wide. 
And now it looks like Junior moved up to try to help Jimmy Johnson get going in the 48. Moved up or slipped up. Yeah, I, I think he's just, when you're in that position, you kind of want to use a lot of racetrack and not help either the bottom line or the top line. Well, he didn't. He was consistent, helped neither one of them. And now that they're up to speed, he's fairly safe. Mark Martin in the six, next to Jimmy Johnson in the 48. Mark beginning his final season in the NASCAR Nextel Cup Series, won the truck race here on Friday night. How about that six car, Snyder? Yeah, Bill, a Daytona resident. That was actually his first ever points paying win here at Daytona was Friday night. He'd love to make it the weekend sweep, if you will, in the two races that he was in this weekend. Mark, two tires on the last stop. Car's been a little bit tight. They've been gaining on it, though. Mark said they're getting a little bit better. Up one round on the track bar, trying to loosen it up. Mark ran the international race of champions here on Friday. Took a hard hit in that race. They didn't fare finish. too well in that one. No, but he made it up later that night in the truck race. I tell you, folks, I am really impressed with Tony Stewart in that 20 car. I thought when he brushed the wall off turn two, 50 or 60 laps ago, his day would be over. He'd just limp around and finish about 20th. But he's going to be a contestant for the victory. The guy he tangled with, not quite as fortunate so far. Allen on Jeff Gordon. Yeah, Bill, I uh, just finished talking with his crew chief, Steve Letarte. They got a chance to work on the front end alignment. That's great. They're close. Problem is, they've lost third gear in the transmission, and Steve said, we'll be lucky to make it through the day without the rest of the gears coming out of it. Yeah, all those pieces are floating around in that trans... All the broken pieces are floating around in that transmission right now, and, yeah, you're very lucky if you can get through the day without those pieces getting in the good stuff that's already working fine, and... That's going to be really, really tough. Plus, if this thing comes down to a green-white checkered or anything like that, Jeff's going to be in big trouble. Because he's not going to be able to move through the gears. Now you go from second to fourth, and that's a huge... That's like in your street car going from first to fourth. There's a takes a long time for the car to get up to speed. Gordon runs in the 33rd position, defending champion of this race. And it's worth pointing out that he comes in off a disappointing 2005 season, won three of the first nine races, and never saw victory lane until Martinsville late in the year. That 96 car is Terry Labonte. That car is owned by Roger Stallback and Troy Aikman. Hall of Fame races. And the 96 car driven by Terry Labonte, I thought those guys naming him to drive the car was a stroke of genius because NASCAR reserves a spot for a previous Nextel Cup champion. So they said, Terry Labonte, drive the car, and they're guaranteed a spot in the first five races of 2006. Terry is a two-time series champion. Marty, what do you got? And back in his pits for most of the day, Troy Aikman and Roger Stallback, as you would expect. And I was talking to Troy earlier today about what he expects from this race team this year. He said, listen, my rookie year in the NFL, I was 0-11 as a starter, so I don't expect much out of us this year. We finished top 25, that'll be good. But these five races Terry's in, we want some good things out of him. Terry running well today. And Benny, Terry's only driving a handful of them until they get secured in the top 35 in points, and then they'll make a driver change. They've already got their other driver lined up for that. Tony Raines was announced as the driver of the 96 car, and after the, in the sixth race, he will take over. He's just passed the halfway mark, and no car has been declared out of this race yet. Although Jeff Green, Kyle Petty, J.J. Ailey, and Carl Edwards back in the garage, 22 laps down. Now there's a battle for the lead. And oh, <laughs> it's a battle for a top 20. <laughs> exactly, and a battle for 20th at the same time. Top 16 cars, nine tenths of a second apart. Now Stewart really bump drafting the sixth car right now. Just a moment ago, Tony Stewart in the 20, and Jimmy Johnson 40, almost making contact, and again. Wow. That's just, that's just, I don't know what Jimmy Johnson did, but Stewart was angry with him. I mean, that's, when you drive up on somebody like that, they've made you man a lap or two before. Is he taking it off on his teammate? Uh, no, I don't think he would do that. Okay. I think it's something that probably he thought Jimmy Johnson did. Well, that McMurray loves the outside. That's he in the 26 car right up next to the outside retaining wall. Matt, what do you got? 
Well, just remember back last year, Bill, they had a great battle going to the finish, traded some paint. They laughed about it afterwards, but they both remembered what happened here one year ago. Looked like Mark was uh, getting a little push from Tony there. That's only one car, Kenny Schrader driving for the Wood Brothers this year. Currently shown in about the fifth, sixth position. I thought Schrader was going to be good today. I think he was kind of hanging out towards the back there for a while. It seemed like maybe it's just a ride to see if the big one would happen. But he's got a very good race car. Matt, the uh, 20 and the 48 had that battle at the end of the race last year, right? Absolutely. Dale Earnhardt Jr. back out front. Almost won the race last year. Back out front leading here. And when Richie Gilmore, who heads up the racing group over at DEI, sat down and looked at 2005, he felt like the competition had gained on them in their restrictor plate program. He rearranged a few of the talented people in that department over the offseason. Bob Burham, who was building engines for Truex, came back and headed up the plate program. Even Richie got in their engine room over the winter and helped out. They feel like they've made some gains. They really feel like you'll see that at Talladega in a few months. Junior's out front, says the car just not as good out front as he loses the lead three wide. Wow, Mark Martin had a run of a century coming off a of turn four, probably because Tony Stewart gave him a bump, but did you see him shoot through that pack? Did I ever? It looked like he was 20 miles per hour faster <laughs> than the competition. Obviously, that's not the case, but it looked that way. Mark does not particularly care for this restrictor plate type of racing, but right now he's in his favorite spot. In front. <laughs> yes, sir, Matt. And you saw how fast that three wide pass developed. Junior said, wow. That just came out of nowhere. And you have to be careful because that yellow line at the bottom of the track is out of bounds. You cannot go down below that yellow line around this racetrack to make a pass. If you go down there, somebody goes by you or you go by somebody. Rather, you have to let them make up that position or NASCAR will bring you to pit road. Marty. Mark Martin, they told him to stay in line. We're okay right where we are. And I said, Mark stayed in the right line. He said he had to lift or they were going to push him below the yellow line. Mark getting a great push out in front. Mark Martin has been runner-up for the championship four times. He has never won the Daytona 500. He lives just down the street. That's where the party would be. Look out! Wow, I can't believe everybody missed that. 20 wrecked me, guys. The 20 uh, wrecked me, plain as day. How bad is it, man? Matt Kenseth uh, is in the wall. It, but it's uh, not good. And I don't know how badly he has back in the yeah, fence. We've got a lot of damage here in the left front, BP. I see some damage on the left front. You got any tires down right now? Matt Ru Kenseth talking to his crew chief, Robbie Reiser, wants to know if he can come get tires. I can't tell if they're flat or not. And Robbie wants to know if the tires are flat. If they are, he's going to have to come toward the two-pit road because those flat Let tires will turn thing. the sheet metal off. Pit road is closed, so if he pits early, there's a penalty. He has to start at the rear of the field. Let's see if we can check what happened. There's Tony. Wow, man, well, it doesn't get more blatant than that. And look at this. Up across the track. And a lot of guys with some heads up driving. Yeah, a lot of cars missed this wreck. Oh, my goodness. Bobby Labonte getting by on the inside. We saw Mike Wallace go by on the outside. Dale Jarrett back in the 88. Now here's the first angle again. Watch the 20. 17's on the right-hand side. You know, for a guy that was talking about over-aggressive driving, which was Tony Stewart earlier this week, I, I don't understand what his situation was there. Talked about it on the Bank of America countdown to green. Unless he thought he had cleared Kinsley. You know, that's a long way to drive down a race track to see if you think he cleared somebody. Dave Burns. And Bill, the Kyle Busch story continues in his own mind. He wondered if he'd been the cause of that since he had been pointed at so many times this week. He asked twice on his radio. They told him no. Thanks, Dave. Pit road is open. Mark Martin leads the way. Snyder. Well, Mark Martin in second place hits pit road. Bill very happy with the car. They're going to take four tires. There'll be no chassis changes on the stop for Mark. He liked it out front. That's where he wants to keep it. Dave. 
and the five car of Kyle Busch, after wondering whether or not he'd been the cause, they told him, Kyle, don't worry about things like that. Slight adjustment to his car to make it more drivable. Alan? Tony Stewart going to get four tires and a minor chassis adjustment to help the handling of his car. He has said nothing on the radio that I've heard about the incident, just about his car's handling, Matt. Tony Jr. continuing on with the same adjustment he made the last couple of stops. A close battle off pit road with a 16 and the 6. They made it a big air pressure adjustment again to try to free him up. Alan? Uh, Jimmy Johnson on and off pit road, getting service from his crew. We'll check the adjustments they might have made here in just a second. And you can see Biffle gained 16 spots. That means he changed two tires. The competition changed four. A, a variety of pit strategies playing out here at Daytona. We've passed the halfway mark, just 92 laps to go. Here is the race off of pit road, won by Dale Earnhardt Jr. There's Biffle, Mark Martin, Jimmy Johnson, and the rest of the field back onto the track here at Daytona. Still under caution here at Daytona. That is Greg Zipidelli, the crew chief for defending series champion Tony Stewart. Stewart and his crew in his car have had quite a day. First of all, he gets loose off turn two. Took the lead on the next lap, but then Jeff Gordon comes up in the 24 car. Both Gordon and Stewart brush the wall off turn two. But Tony came back from that and that damage. See the crew working on it? After it really looked like he might not even be competitive, and then just moments ago, contact sending Matt Kenseth spinning through the grass at Daytona. And Kenseth said on his radio that the 20 car just flat out spun me out. NASCAR has sent the 20 to the end of the longest line for aggressive driving. Yeah, you don't drive all the way across the racetrack like that unless you're after somebody. So NASCAR made a call, aggressive driving. It's just, it, it seems a little bit ironic that this, this is the driver that started all that after the Bud shootout about guys being too aggressive and causing problems. And we see Tony going down pit road and he's been followed by Matt Kenseth. He's probably gonna, uh, I thought he was gonna tap him. <laughs> he, uh, he thought he was yeah, scoring too. He wanted and then to. Robbie Reiser he talked him no, out. No, 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 no. <laughs> his crew chief Robbie Reiser talked Matt out of doing what he was thinking about doing. Now as good as this car is with the 20 car right now, I mean, he'll, he'll get his way back up to the front, but we'll see how good the 17 is. Marty? Well, as you can imagine, Matt Kenseth is extremely upset. He said, I had a winning race car. There was no reason for him to do that. He felt the NASCAR's penalty was not strong enough. They're concerned about the left front valence on this car. They want to clear it from the left front tire to make sure it won't rub. Alan? Tony Stewart has come down pit road for repairs to his car. They're checking around that right rear bodywork, being sure of their tire clearance. They've also put a big patch on the left rear where there's some fender damage there as well. And they'll send Tony back out here with the... Uh, those uh, repairs affected to his car. Thank you, Alan. Nah. How emotional is Tony Stewart? This is his onboard camera. A few minutes ago. He evidently looked up and saw that he was on the on camera on the big screens around the racetrack and said, move the camera. Now we're going to leave pit road. And NASCAR has, NASCAR race control a moment ago told both these drivers, Matt Kenseth in the 17 and Tony Stewart in the 20 to settle down. Well, you know, Kenseth should be hot. He's got a race car that's probably not capable of winning the Daytona 500 now because of that. Black flag 17, Matt Kenseth will have to come to pit road. And the, the, they're gonna throw the green flag. This is them coming off of pit road after they had been warned to settle down. When you, when you leave pit road, you can't go above the yellow line. And he was, in his eagerness to get to the 20 car, went above the yellow line. The green flag is out, so we'll see what Matt does. Well, I mean, Matt will come in, but he pretty much knows that his day is over. He doesn't have a shot at winning this race any longer. Robbie Reiser might be more angry with Matt now than he is with Tony Stewart. Because you saw how Stewart's car came back from its contact. It's a pass-through penalty for the 17. There's Michael Walchup and then Napa car right there, side by side of the five car. That's the first time we really talked about Michael. Gets around this place very good. Robbie Roger is hot. It's furious. Matt, 
we got to settle down out there and just ride in line. They're going to get you in a pass through here. Junior Lee. Oh. This is <laughs> yep. Pimple moves out, gets a push from Mark Martin and is trying to go by the eighth car of Dylan Hart Jr. The six of Martin and the 16 of Biffle are teammates from Roush Racing. Biffle has a win here at Daytona in the July race. You gotta come down for a pass through. Nah. You gotta come down for a pass through. I can't, I for can't. What, Robbie? All I did was bump, I put my hand up and I took off. I didn't do nothing wrong. I didn't run into anybody, I didn't do anything. NASCAR doesn't agree with that. I don't think he can go above that yellow line when he leaves the pits. I think. Can you ask him for clarification, and then I'll be right there because I'd like to know what I did wrong first. And then you're screwing around with the 20, and that's why you're making us do this. Hold up next to him, put my hand up to him, like, why did you do that? That's all I did. Well, he pulled up next to him and passed him. They have I... already warned those guys, Benny. Oh, I, I thought that it was for going. I just wanted a clarification of what it was for to make sure I was right. Junior going for the lead. Jimmy Johnson going to help him. I'm a little surprised Biffle hung Mark out. Mark helped yep. Biffle get yep. the lead, and Biffle just hung Mark out to dry on the outside. Now Mark's on the inside. Probably won't forget that later on in the race. Earnhardt Jr. i tell you what, back in that one car, Martin Truex Jr., another impressive run today. We saw him brush the wall off turn two very early in the race. Matt Kenseth, the pit road to serve his pass-through penalty. Means he has to make a lap down pit road, does not have to stop. At 55 miles per hour. And these guys are going how fast? 185. So Matt's going to lose considerable ground here. Now, that's the blend line I was talking about. You're supposed to stay below that, but maybe on the caution flag, you can go up there. I thought that's what NASCAR was getting him for. I think they're getting him for weaving at the 20 force and the 20 down below the yellow line. And then he passed him anyway, which you can't do coming off a good road. Wow. Kyle Busch right on, underneath Craig Biffle. Now, you can't pass here. This is a no passing zone. You have to hold your position. So Kenza comes up, watch him turn down. And that's what NASCAR is saying that they penalized him for. Aggressive driving towards the 20. Whoa, Junior down below that yellow line, but Kyle looked Bush. like he may have been forced down there. Up high. And takes the lead. Strung out a little bit here. He'll close back up in no time, though. Now, if you think Matt Kenseth and Robbie Reiser were mad a few seconds ago, they ran a lap that they are not going to be scored for because Matt did not answer the black flag. Oh, boy. Really? So this is now for Matt Kenseth, the Daytona 502 and a half. We watch the leaders, Kyle Busch in the five car in front of Earnhardt and check with Marty. Well, let's see the explanation Robbie Reiser got. What explanation did you get for the penalty, Rob? <laughs> I don't really know. I guess we didn't really cause a wreck. I don't understand any of it at all. Uh, you know, guys have been done a great job with this race car and Matt did a hell of a job up there front. Uh, just one of those deals, I guess. They, did, they, did they mention anything about the blend line? Is there one? <laughs> yeah, I don't think that they mention it. I don't think there is one from way to call in this race today. Oh, they're, well, obviously outspoken, Robbie Reiser, and uh, not happy with the penalty. Matt still upset inside the race car. He said the car cannot keep up with the draft anyway, so we're done for the afternoon. They're going to ride around. Alan? With Greg Zipidelli, Tony Stewart's crew chief, how bad is the damage to your car, and can you come back from the penalty in the lost track position? I think so. He needs to be patient now. we got a long way to go. We obviously got a pretty good race car, and uh, he's a pretty good driver on these restricted fights. So uh, we just need to settle down, think about what we're doing here, and uh, we got plenty of time to get this Home Depot Chevrolet back on the front. Did Tony have a reaction to the penalty? No. Nope. Everything's all right. All right. Thanks, Zippy. 
Thanks, Alan. Kyle Petty has returned to the race in the 45 car. He's scored 29 laps down. All right, there the, the front pack goes by. Now there's a second pack come in there. We see Tony Stewart is second in that pack along with the 11 car of Denny Hamlin, his teammate. Stewart, and, sorry, go ahead. Bob. I was just going to say, the reason he's in that pack or he's so far back is when Kenseth and Stewart came out of the pits, they had a long way to go to catch up with the pack, and these guys got the green before Tony Stewart could catch up with the pack. Plus, he had the penalty. He had to start at the rear of the field, although he wasn't even close to the rear of the field when they restarted. Kyle Busch is the 15th different leader of this race. That ties all Daytona records. Busch out front in the 500. Under green here at Daytona, Jimmy Johnson is the race leader, followed by Kyle Busch. A lot of stories starting to unfold. There is Tony Stewart, 23rd last time by, and he is right behind well, Matt Kenseth. Surrounded by all his friends. 24 is there. We got run up, pinched off a two earlier in the race. Tony is following Matt Kenseth. And I'll tell you, Matt Kenseth is, knows exactly where Tony Stewart is on this racetrack right now. And here are his thoughts on Tony after the last caution came out. Tony wrecked me, guys. Tony uh, wrecked me, plain as day. Okay, so let me get this straight. I had a winning car, and I'm going to run like something, and they put him to a rear and a track he could draft. You think maybe they could put him a clamp down or something? Caution flag is out. Waiting to find out why. See, Robbie Gordon. Yeah, we got Robbie Gordon's got a tire coming off. You know, I saw Robbie get real high in turn two about a lap ago, and I believe he hit the wall coming off of two. Yeah, we see damage on the right side of this automobile. Robbie Gordon missed the Daytona 500 a year ago. Uh, let's see, where is he at? Right up there on the right. Okay, yeah, very high. See him, Robbie's way up there. He may be even losing a tire at this point. And all these cars see that slower car and go to the inside and somehow miss him. How many has Bobby Labonte missed today in that <laughs> 43 car? There's another one that's right in front of him. Sterling Marlin in the 14. Rookie Clint Boyer in that 0-7. Robbie Gordon on pit road for repairs. 124 laps are complete. Jimmy Johnson leads Kyle Busch, Brian Vickers, Jamie McMurray, and Jeff Burton, the pole sitter, has worked his way up to the fifth spot. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is sixth. Okay, we'll see another feeding, feeding frenzy on pit road, I'm sure. Marty, you go first. Well, Jamie McMurray is in fourth, and he told his crew chief, Jimmy Finning, this car is loose, but it's fast like this. I want to leave it alone. Let's put four tires on it, make no chassis changes. Finning said, okay, we'll do this for one run, but we may change it later. Dave? Earlier, Kyle Busch had been saying right there in the middle of the five car that you've gotten me looser, but I need more, need more. This time, no changes scheduled. I think they found it, Alan. Jimmy Johnson, top left of the frame in the 48 car. Watch for a wrench to go in the left rear window, make an adjustment. They'll change four tires and send him out. Dale Jr. said to keep going in the same direction we've done the last few stops as Mark Martin already goes by completing his service. He's still tight, but getting better, A.B. A four-tire change for Tony Stewart in the 20 car, not looking for any adjustments there, trying to get him up a little farther with some uh, pit stop work, but it doesn't look like it worked out that well this oh, time. Oh, he huh? takes oh. a jack. Yeah, he took some equipment with him. Looked like Tony was a little bit too close to the wall. Uh oh, did Jeff Chandler get banged with that jack? Looks like maybe he did. Chandler on the right, putting his hands on his hips. Under caution here at Daytona, it has been an interesting day for Tony Stewart. Still under caution, let's go inside the NBC pit window. We see Tony Stewart, the 20 car. Here's the side of the car, here's the pit wall. That looks to be only about three or four feet. The jack handle is six feet long. So Jason Lee, the jack man, 
has to have the jack on an angle. So when he lets the car down, he can't drag the jack out from under it. So Tony leaves and drives over the jack with the left rear as he leaves the pits. And NASCAR is going to penalize Tony Stewart for running over equipment in your pit stall. He's come in to serve that penalty. And that will put him at the rear of the field. And Jeff Chandler, I don't think, was hit by the jack. I think he was ducking because he thought the jack yeah. was going to come back at him. It did. After he ran over the jack, it shot the jack back into the pit of the 20 car. Stewart came in to get his tires checked by his crew in the side of that car to make sure it was all right. We'll have to start at the tail end of the longest line for running over equipment. Remember that singular wireless pole we were talking about earlier, Wallace? That I couldn't vote? <laughs> yes. About an hour ago? No. Here's the payoff. Oh, it's a tie. Even. Even. Oh. They, yeah, I think they'll all benefit, actually. <laughs> One way or another. Alan, you following up on the 24s? No, just a, a neat thing about Jeff Chandler, who we were talking about a second ago. Jeff is a longtime veteran of the Nextel Cup circuit. He actually retired from the over-the-wall crew a couple of years ago. But because Tony Stewart's regular front tire changer, Ira Joe Hussey, had rotator cup surgery in the offseason, Jeff was called back from the retired inactive list <laughs> and is uh, changing tires, trying to help his driver win the Daytona 500. And that put him in that spot. And Alan, he's half the man he used to be, isn't he? Yeah, uh, I'll tell him you said that. He, lo he lost 52 pounds, BP. Yeah, he told me that. Said he was having fun going back over the wall. I'm impressed with folks that can lose weight. You, no kidding, you and me both. All right, here that, we go. That you said it. I had to do it before you got in there. <laughs> Corvette pace car to pit road. Mark yeah. Martin with a two-tire stop flag, leads. Flag. And I'm really surprised that Mark and Patch Rice and his crew chief decided to take two as well as that car seemed to be handling. And he was running in that lead pack. See how it works out for him. Marty, what do you think? Well, I asked Pat Rice, and why'd you take two tires? Because Bill Weber disagrees with you. I'm <laughs> kidding, I didn't say that. I said, why'd you take two tires? And he said, well, a couple of reasons. Number one, we only had 12 green flag laps on our other set of tires. Number two, we needed track position. Mark just does not like this car back in traffic. So some cars are better when they're up front and clean air. That's what Mark wants, and that's what he's got. That's what all drivers say, Marty. My car's a lot better out front. Might not be there for long. Jimmy Johnson will challenge for the lead. He's going to challenge, but I don't know if he'll be able to pull it off or not. Because Martin has the eight car of Junior, the 26, of McMurray, and Vickers, the 25. The line is on the inside, not the outside. And that 26 of McMurray, that is a strong race car. Tell me what, I've been saying that all day. That guy's got a good race car underneath him. He's been working all day to try to get in position. Marty, he's in position now. He's in a great spot while he likes that bottom line now. Remember we told you earlier he liked that top line? He came on the radio about 40 laps ago and said, guys, this top line is not moving. Let's work the bottom. The car's a little bit loose like you would want it here, and he's very happy with it right now, Dave. 25 car of Brian Vickers. I spoke with him this morning. He told me, you know what? I like working with all my teammates, the five, the 24, everybody that's in the race. And he's been working very well with Kyle Busch. Needs to get back with him right now as Vickers has a car that he thinks can win the Daytona 500. Right about now, a lot of guys think they have a car that can win the, da the Daytona 500. Yeah, all those guys in the picture for sure. <laughs> Alan? Well, Jimmy Johnson, first of all, glad to have his Hendrick Motorsports teammate Kyle Busch come up behind him. Normally, Johnson drafts with Jeff Gordon in these restrictor plate races. We've documented the problems Gordon has been having today. He's not there for his teammate Jimmy. So maybe Kyle Busch will be the guy that pushes that 48 back to the front. Just to update, Gordon 21st last time by. Tony Stewart runs 27th after the penalty. Don't forget their other teammate is in fourth place, and that 25 car is Brian Vickers. Dave, about the five. And Kyle Busch reported to his team, hey, tell the 48 I'm on his tail, and maybe the 25 will come and play as well. All teammates trying to link up and go to the front. All drive for Rick Hendrick and Hendrick Motorsports. And again, we will point out that Jimmy Johnson's regular crew chief, Chad Knauss, is not here today. Ejected from the racetrack earlier this week after the car failed post-qualifying inspection. I think if that outside line got a good run, Benny, and the 25 saw the 48 coming, he'd jump out in front of the 48 to try to get pushed to the front, but they just can't quite get there. 
We see he's losing spots. The 31 of Jeff Burton has been able to get by Jimmy Johnson. Here comes Kurt Busch in the two car. That outside line will not do it for you. I see the trunk car behind the two, his teammate of Kurt Busch, and he has been at the back of the pack for the last 100 miles or so. Looks like they might have some problems ironed out on that 12 car. Or he might have just been hanging out for a while. Could be. Sometimes some drivers will do that. There's the 12 of Ryan Newman, the Miller Lite ride of Kurt Busch, replacing longtime veteran Rusty Wallace in that two car. Wallace retired following last season. Yeah, you'll get in a situation as a driver where things will start getting really crazy, three wide, cars sliding over the racetrack. He may just back off the throttle and let these guys, if you think a wreck is coming, just back off, get to the back a little bit, and let it settle down before you can work your way up. One great thing about restricted plate racing, if you hang on to that draft, even if it's in the back, you can work your way back up to the front. And we've seen that happen today. Jimmy Johnson, that 48 car, is making his way back towards the front. And Vickers, that just like you said, he jumped out to the outside to try to help the 48 get to the front. So three Henry cars, 25, 48, 5, all together on the outside line, trying to get back to the front. Looking for the 20 of Tony Stewart and the 29 of Kevin Harvick. Alan, what are you working on? Uh, Kevin Harvick, a little report there, Bill. Remember, he was uh, up front in the top five a couple of pit stops ago, and he's kind of disappeared from the radar. They had to stop under the caution at lap 102 and change the carburetor on the engine of that machine. Long pit stop to do that. Harvick back in 28th place, trying to work his way toward the front. But he's still got time to do that, Juan. Oh, yeah, they've got plenty of time to do that. They can still see that front pack, so still got a chance. The fast car is back there. And we can see Jimmy Johnson still hooked up with his teammates, trying, trying to get by. There's a lap car of Jeff Green on the bottom. That's why those guys are moving up. Yeah, I was going to say, that's actually going to help that bottom line a little bit, because, or the top line, because the bottom line had to move up a little because of that slower car. So now the 25 of Vickers. And Junior, the A-car, moved up to try to help those, look like to help those Chevrolets a little bit. Whoa, a little wow. twitch there on the A-car of Dale Earnhardt Jr. Matt? Bill, they have done a lot of work on Biffle's Ford. Uh, three stops ago, they pitted several times in that caution just to try to seal up where the fender meets the rocker panel, trying to seal up the aerodynamics on that right side. They took two tires, got some track position. Now they are in a good spot on the racetrack. That's a 16 of Greg Biffle runs fourth in that inside line. Mark Martin continues to lead. Mark Martin told the media driving that six car earlier this week, if he won the Daytona 500, he might not even go to the next race. He'll be there. Because he'll be the points leader. Exactly. <laughs> Alan, how about Johnson? Whoa, Just so 26 whoa. car bobbles a little bit, gets a little loose when Biffle gets right on the tail. How about Johnson? He's probably catching his breath from yes, seeing sir. that. Uh, just something to look ahead as we get to the later stages of this race. Jimmy Johnson and his team want to find some way, any way, to be leading off of pit road at the last pit stop. They feel like the guy that's in front from the last pit stop to the checkered flag is going to be the winner of this race. Watch for Jimmy's team to work very hard between now and the next pit stop, which won't be the last one to try and get his car close to the front so they can let the pit crew try and steal that track position on the final stop. Dave? That two car of Kurt Busch trying to move up through the pack, he's found something in the handling that he needs to have here today. It car is just a little bit loose. It needs to be that way to run fast. Kurt finished second in this race last year. He runs Daytona very well and it stays up in the front of this pack. And look who's behind him in that 55 car. Michael Waltrip, the two-time Daytona 500 winner, Matt. Bill, he was just hanging out in the back for a good portion of this race. They've made some adjustments over the past couple of stops. First he was tight and then he was loose, but he wanted just to hang in the back, let things settle down, and now he's making his move to the front as well. Great run for the Napa Chevy, currently 10. I'd say the race is officially underway, BP. <laughs> they got 63 to go. If trouble breaks out, we'll break in. Mark Martin leads at Daytona. 
60 laps to go, and they have been side by side here at Daytona, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. finally breaks in front of Mark Martin. Take a look at our DLP lap leaders. 24 lead changes among 16 drivers. The 16 drivers, a track record. Matt Kenseth has led the most laps, but that won't be happening anymore. He's uh, two laps down after uh, an incident with Tony Stewart and then a penalty for not listening to NASCAR and being a nice boy. I tell you what, I was impressed with the job that Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the eight car did. Usually the 25 car of Brian Vickers to get by Mark Martin. He moved out, helped, tried to get him up closer to him, closer to him. When he got there, moved up, and they drafted by. And are, what do you think about the two tires? Do you think that's a, having an effect on Mark's car? I, it, well, it will now. From okay. now on, it will. I mean, in the first 10 laps, 15 laps, it really won't. But... You know, the BP, the thing about it is, the guys like Junior and these guys, you got to always be looking in the mirror. You got to be looking for that guy that's coming at you to make a pass that's got a lot of momentum. You want to drive in front of him because if you can drive in front of him and get that push, that's going to win you this race. And not too far back in this pack, you'll find the 24 car, Jeff Gordon. So he's among the leaders. Let's take you through the field. Dave Burns. And Bill, one of the most important people on a team is the spotter for these drivers. He's the eye in the sky that helps him make those daring moves at the end of this race. Well, Brian Spotter is new to him this year, but he's a veteran spotter. His name is Chuck Joyce, and he's a family friend from years back when they used to go on vacation together. Brian said, I trust him, but we haven't worked together a lot. We'll see how well they work together at the end of the 500. Matt? Almost three wide, Dave, at the front with Junior on the bottom, Johnson in the middle on the 25 up high. Now, it's not surprising that Junior pulled in front of the six. That was one of the conversations they talked about. Now, Junior dives up high, says the car a little on the tight side, trying to maybe throw a block on the five. Can't do it, A.B. Jimmy Johnson's team continues to work at this car. Little bits and pieces of adjustments on every pit stop. Still, Johnson struggling with front end grip on the car, even when he's out in front and getting all the airflow over the nose of the machine. Dave? Kyle Busch working well together with others, especially his teammates. On that last stop, his car was good enough that they didn't want to make any changes. He believes now that it's good enough to race. Look at him hook up with his other two teammates. Marty? Mark Martin has had a tight race car for most of the afternoon. Those two tires we talked about starting the show now. Mark's in the cars going away handling-wise just a little bit, trying to keep it on the bottom line and keep it in that front pack, Dave. Kurt Busch has won at least one race every year since... Actually, uh, starting last year, he's on a streak right now, looking for his first Daytona 500 win. Again, running very well here, looking to the inside of Mark Martin. And his teammate, the 12, Ryan Newman, trying to get up with the two as a drafting partner. Mark Martin pulls down in front. Newman's been fighting a tight condition and a vibration most of the afternoon. He feels like it's more of an aero tight condition. And what about Reed Sorensen? Very impressive day in the high line right now on the outside of the 22. He was planning on trying to stay on the bottom most of the day like he did in his qualifying race where he had a successful day there as well. But right now he's up high with the 26. Dave? Dave Blaney has had trouble with his car turning all day. That tight condition, he's been reporting it to his team. They've been working on it. It's the best it's been all day. Blaney now in the 22 in a team that's won here before working his way to the front. Marty? Well, Jamie McMurray has a handful, Dave, in that 26 purple car right there beside the 55 of Michael Walter. The car is loose, which means that back end wants to kick around. But when it's like that, it's fast. Jamie back up in the high line, trying to make his way back to the front. Matt, the two-time 500 winner, Michael Walter, on the inside in the Bill Davis Napa number 55 Dodge. Hung in the back earlier, now trying to make his presence known, slowly working his way up, but he's got it. The 43, Bobby Labonte trying to dive on the inside, who's taken over the 43 this year. Labonte's car, no change on the last stop. Hey guys, look who's creeping up the running order. Jeff Gordon, the defending 500 winner. The transmission's holding on. They worked on the toe out and the steering the last couple of times they've been on pit road. Jeff reporting just a little bit ago on the radio. Car's not bad right now. That could be bad news for everybody else, Matt. Biffle said earlier the car was handling beautifully. Then he had the issues on the right side. Now he's on the outside talking about what adjustments to make on their last stop. They tried the two tires earlier and their tire wear was excellent, Marty. 
Well, Matt, back there in that white and green car, the 14 of Sterling Marlin, a two-time Daytona 500 winner. This is a backup car, and Sterling lurking in the field on their last four stops, last four stops. They've made no changes to that car, Dave. Casey Kane is running conservatively up front. He'd like to race more aggressively at the end of the race. He's been staying mid to front pack most of the afternoon. We'll see what happens later on, Matt. And Kenny Schrader taking over the 21 from Ricky Rudd, who finished second a couple of times, but never got that win with the Wood Brothers, hoping for a win with that famous car this year. He's battling weather issues. The car just tight. Meanwhile, David Stremme, who's also new in the 40 car this year, battling for Rookie of the Year honors, having a very solid day. You can see a lot of cosmetic tape on the front of that car. Snyder? Well, Matt, remember earlier, Elliott Sadler was fast and up front of the field, and now he's not so fast. The car too tight for Elliott Sadler. He said the car will not run the bottom of the racetrack at all. He has to run high to carry the momentum that he needs. Dave? Casey Mears thinks he can contend at the end, but his car just has a little trouble turning. His team made a track bar and air pressure adjustment last time to adjust that chassis to try to make it more racy for Casey. <laughs> That's easy for you to say, Dave. <laughs> Good line, Dave. The 20 of Tony Stewart runs in 28th position. There are 36 cars on the lead lap. Carl Edwards is the first car officially retired from the race. 42 cars still in competition. Brian Vickers out front in the Daytona 500. Just 50 laps to go. Still green here at Daytona. Brian Vickers continues to lead. Tonight on NBC, a huge night of Olympic action. American speed skater Jennifer Rodriguez goes for the gold in the women's 1,000 meter. And Todd Hayes makes a drive for gold in the two-man bobsled. It's all tonight, 7 Eastern and Pacific on NBC. Teammates running 1-2. Brian Vickers, 22 years old, being pushed by his teammate Jimmy Johnson, who's racing this weekend without his crew chief. About five laps to pit stops. And these pit stops are probably going to be the most important if, of the year. I mean, well, this, this could oh, this could mean a, a win. Oh, these guys are really He's below the yellow line. Other. He had two tires below the yellow line. Was he forced down there? He's letting him get the spot back. So that so he did what he yep, was supposed to very do. Good. Gave him the spot back. So there's no foul right there. But this is where the pressure is put on those pick crews right now. These guys have been out here wheeling these cars. This is what it comes down to. You do not want to make a mistake in the pits or it will cost you a shot at winning this race. Every second that you lose in the pits, you get it off pit road, off pit road, is 300 feet, 100 yards. Oh, gosh, Frank. Debris on the front stretch. Caution out with 46 to go. And they cannot make it on one on this stop. They've got to stop again after this pit stop. Kurt might have pulled up there to give a hand signal to Jimmy Johnson. Here's how they were racing a minute ago. Kurt Busch in the two. And see, all Jimmy Johnson, he, like I said, he was looking in the mirror. He saw Kurt Busch make a move, so he went to put the block. Okay, okay. so when he went to put the block on, Actually, two blocks right two, there. Yeah. <laughs> he blocked on the, tried to block on the outside, then the inside. And Kurt Busch knew he didn't, he couldn't go past that line, so they made a little contact, but he realized he did, and he gave the spot back. And he's probably not real happy with the move that Jimmy Johnson made, but that is part of this racing. He had quite a run there, too. Yeah. The two did. Yep. Okay, we're going to step out. Pit road is closed. We'll be back for the stops. NBC Sports Live at the Daytona International Speedway, the season opener for the NASCAR Nextel Cup Series, the Daytona 500, the biggest race on the schedule. 200,000 people are here, 45 laps to go. Pit road is open, we're under caution. Brian Vickers will lead the field into what could be the final stops of the day. Marty. And Bill, a developing story for the man in fourth place, Jamie McMurray, he told the crew under caution, the water pressure is at zero in the car. I'm concerned about that. Chassis-wise, he's a little loose, and he says fast. Dave? 
The back end of Brian Vickers' car wants to swap around. When he goes into the corner, they made a slight chassis adjustment for fresh tires to try to help him, Allen. Front tire carrier Art Simmons stuck a piece of tape from course as part of the grill opening on Jimmy Johnson's car on his way around the car, trying to help the front end turn a little bit better, Matt. Dale Earnhardt Jr. told his team, take a look at the front. I might have hit something. The car just feels a little different as Bill Elliott's away. They've already made the track bar adjustment to try to free him up more, Alan. Air pressure and track bar adjustments for Tony Stewart as his crew tries to help his car's handling to see if he can get back toward the front. Thanks, guys. Benny, these guys cannot make it from here, no. but if it if it stays green, we probably wouldn't see another four-tire stop, would you think? Probably fuel only, two tire, two right side tires. You're right. The, the, the least amount of time they can spend in the pits is what they'll do on that last stop. So this set of stops sets the stage for the closing laps of the Daytona 500. 44 to go on NBC. Trying to defend his Daytona 500 championship. A green car, 61, Kevin the Page just goes down, makes a pit stop, stayed out, led a lap. Now watch the traffic on pit road here. And Jimmy Johnson locked up that right front a little bit, BP, but I don't think enough to hurt that tire. When you slide those tires, you put flat spots on them and it makes the cars vibrate. There you go. We'll go. Whoa! Go to the grass. And there's a lot of tracks you can't do that. There's a lot of tracks. There's a pit wall in between pit lane and the racetrack. So Jimmy Johnson back out on the track. His teammate Jeff Gordon will restart 17th. Lights out on the pace car. We'll get the green flag next time by. Marty, what are you working on for the 26 there? Well, we told you Jamie McMurray has zero water pressure. It concerns him. Does it concern you, Jimmy Finney? Uh, right now, we got it a little bit too hot, but he ducked out of line, and we got temperature back down, and it's starting to build pressure, so we should be all right right now. So that will not affect his horsepower for the rest of the race? Uh, not with the horsepower right now. Everything looking pretty good, you know. The, at Crown Royal Ford Fusion, doing a, uh, doing awesome out there today. But uh, I think our I think our horsepower is going to be there. Uh, the water at one point, guys, got up to 275. Benny Wiley, I've never driven a race car, but that's not good, is it? Well, 275 isn't. It's not. It's getting there. But you can run these things, you know, 260 safely. It's just when you start getting really hotter than that and it starts pushing water out, that's when you're in trouble. Look who's running 29th on the lead lap. Kirk Shelmerdine. This was the feel-good story of 2006 Speed Weeks. Came down here on a shoestring and made the Daytona 500 qualified. Got some financial help from um, the mother of a friend of his? Yeah. Winifred Feaser up in Winston-Salem had been helping him the last three or four years. She passed away in November, but just before she did, she told her son, be sure you give Kirk that money he needs to go to Daytona. They wrote the check, he came and made the Daytona 500. Each year she'd given him $50,000. This year his son wrote the check for $60,000. That helped Kirk get into the race. He let it be known through the media that he needed a sponsor for tire money. He didn't get any, but some longtime Dale Earnhardt Sr. fans in the infield heard he needed money for tires. They got him on the cell phone, got a hold of him, and gave him money to pay his tire bill here today. And why would Dale Earnhardt fans help him? Because he was a longtime Dale Earnhardt crew chief back in the 80s. Won four titles with Dale Earnhardt and 41 races. All oh, right. Scraggly there on that restart. Kind of a gap there back there, about 15th or so. Oh, they're bumping into each other in a corner. We talked about the bump wrap in the corner is not the thing to do. And there's the gaps back there. It's kind of really a, not a very good restart for those guys in the back, but up front. They love it. They like it because they're looking in the mirror and they want to see those guys in the back running side by side. Because of the low cloud cover, not a lot of on boards able to function properly because our helicopter is so low to the ground. No, but we'll take it. That's this is right. great stuff here. See how these cars really move around. You, when you look at the cars like this, these cars look like they're glued to the racetrack, but trust me, they're not. When you're inside these cars, you are hanging on for dear life. They float around. 100 miles to go. And once again, we saw Jimmy Johnson at 48 move down the block the Kurt Busch two car. There we go, Kurt trying <laughs> once again. <laughs> There's his brother over there, swinging on the outside. That high line BP trying to get the momentum back. Brian Vickers in the 25 car leading that pack. 
Junior out front. Ryan Newman runs second. Jimmy Johnson in the 48. Third in that inside line. Newman to the high side in that 12 car. What in the world was he trying to help use that 25 to get by the eight? Alan? Hey, guys, when that 48 car is coming at you right there, see that bright neon piece of tape on the grill? Yeah. That's the chassis adjustment they made last time. Jimmy Johnson's been looking for more front-end grip on that car all day, so that's what they did. The tire carrier, Art Simmons, stuck that on there. Now, when you stick that on a race car that's been out in the hot, oily, grubby race conditions all day, sometimes tape doesn't stick. This one has stuck. Jimmy's hoping it helps his car for this final run to the checkers. He's going 188 miles per hour is helping it stick there really good, too. <laughs> but what that does is close in the, the opening in that grill. So it's making the air is hitting that tape, actually helping it push the nose down to the ground. Push the nose down the ground, that pushes the tires into the racetrack more. That gives them more grip. That's what they're trying to do. Ryan Newman is determined to make that outside line work. Well, if he can, he'll lap the field. Hey, he's in front. Yeah, now he's going to go to the inside line. Thanks. See ya. Said, see ya, Brian Vickers, 25. I appreciate the push, but... Uh... Well, that's what you're going to start doing in this part of the race. I mean, you've got 38 laps to go, but, you know, you've got friends out there, but you're really going to start using them. <laughs> that, that lead didn't last long, dude. Here comes Junior back on the inside. These are short-term relationships yeah, now is what exactly. you're saying. Burns? Brian Vickers made just a slight chassis adjustment to help his car. It looks pretty good. The one problem Vickers may have before this race is over is they have to pit once more. He has big trouble getting off of pit lane. First gear lugs large for him. It almost stalled out last time, and he has to rub. He has to use the clutch hard to try to keep that thing from stalling out. Wally, it's tough to get off pit road when you're having problems like that. Yeah, it really is, and that's where you start. When you start doing things like that, you start hurting the drive line and transmissions and... All kinds of good stuff. So, yeah, there, he he doesn't want to see pit lane anymore today. <laughs> and you think that Jeff Gordon in 24 car not having third gear would miss that gear where he has to make a green flag stop. But I don't think they're going to make a green flag stop. These guys are just <laughs> trying to find a place to break. They've done a great job today. Well, they have. I'm impressed with these guys. They've run side by side, nose to tail, and we haven't seen very much contact. But... <laughs> it's not over yet. We get to that 20 lap, I think, window when things really start getting desperate, especially when those guys back four or five rows. They want to get to the front. That's when things start getting hairy. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. talked about that exact thing. As the race comes down to it, everybody wants to win, so there's really no give. Uh, lots of take, lots of beating and banging. Guys will make moves that they traditionally wouldn't make out of characteristic, out of character moves, that's what I like to call them. And uh, sometimes, you know, you get out of the car after the race, you go, man, what were you thinking, you know? But it was the Daytona 500. You know, you gotta do what it takes to win. It's impossible to underscore what a win in this race means to a Nextel Cup driver. And it's not just the win. It's the guy that's running fifth wants to run fourth. The guy running 12th wants to run 11th. Every position you can get is valuable. And Jeff Gordon there in the center in that 24 car kind of worked his way to the front. So they've obviously adjusted on that car. And it's got to be pretty decent because you don't run in the middle here at Daytona if your car's not handling. Gordon was 13th last time by in that 24 car. How about it, Alan? Well, Bill, first of all, the transmission has lived. That was Steve Letarte, the crew chief's biggest concern earlier. But remember when they first had the problem, what was it Steve told Jeff? It's early in the race. We've got a long way to go. We've got time to work on it. They've kept working on it, and they're getting back into contention. Now, Alan, did you say he had third gear now? Whoa. Well, I, I said the transmission is held together. That was their concern when they dropped third gear. I got you. Now, this is kind of what we saw in the Bush race. <laughs> you know, when we're, the closer we get to the finish of the race, we start seeing more and more three, <clears throat> three wide, and you'll see them three wide, eight rows back. There are 36 cars on the lead lap. The top 35 are separated by less than six seconds. So how many cars still have a chance to win this? Every one of those cars in that <laughs> picture has a shot at winning this race. You cannot give up in the Daytona 500. Strong comebacks today by Stewart and Gordon. And the 12th car, Ryan Newman. I, I watched him, and we see Junior give the signal to Kurt Busch to go ahead on the inside. Now teammates run first and second. Ryan Newman in the 12, oh. Kurt Busch in the 2, Eight. driving for Roger Penske. 
McMurray helping out the eight. Yeah, he had the eight car jacked up. I mean, he gave him a good push, and that's what he needed, but Junior did a good job holding that car straight because when you hit somebody that hard, you actually take the rear wheels off the racetrack, and the car gets squirrely, and you got to let the guy behind you get off you, come back on the racetrack, and hang on. So see there again, exactly. Did exactly the same thing. Got to make sure you do that on the straightaway, not in the corners. <laughs> and Jamie had to back up just a little bit to let the eight car get control, and he's going to lose a couple of spots. Matt, Phil Penske Racing has such a storied history. 13 Indianapolis 500 wins. We told you how Roger Penske has never won the Great American Race right now. His two cars are 1-2. Newman says the car is a little tight down in 1-2, and two, but it is great down in 3-4. and four. And that vibration we told you earlier, it's gone away. Dave. Matt, as we've been watching, the two-car Kurt Busch has raced up front nearly all day. And talking with crew chief Roy McCauley this morning, he said, we will race as hard as we can to stay up front all day long. And within the last 40 laps, that is the time to go. Now there's 32 left, Matt. It will be interesting if we get a green flag final pit stop. In fact, one owner who has a car in the top 10 came on the radio and said to his team, if it was green flag stops all day, the eight team would have the field a lap down. They have been magnificent on pit road. They are about five to six laps short of making it. So they are gonna have to go. Now the big question, BP and Wally, will it be a gas and go, two tires? That's the big question here on pit road. Uh I think if it's, I think you got to gas and go. I don't think you can shake tires unless your car is really, really bad. Um, if we're just talking about six or seven laps, we aren't talking about that much gasoline. Right, right, right. But you know, another thing about these guys, too, don't forget, there's a lot of guys that are looking at their rides from last year, <laughs> either in their mirror or in their windshield. And that's something, too, that when a driver changes teams, the last thing he wants to do the first race of the year is get beat by the team he drove for last year. And the first thing he wants to do is beat that guy. And he's got a lot of, you got Bush up there and Casey Mears is up there, Jamie McMurray's up there. They're all kind of looking at each other's rides. And it looked like a little bit ago that the eighth car was going backwards. And now all of a sudden, two laps later, he's going back towards the front again. Talking about the eight of Dylan Hart Jr. That's Hermie Sadler, the double zero. Another Cinderella story here in Daytona this week. Made the race. He's but it doesn't look like he's going to finish no. the race. He's 36. He was the last car on the lead lap. He's going to have to limp back to pit road. Really saved his car. Didn't run a lot of the practices. Took care of his equipment. Was hoping to get a good finish here. Last place in this race pays about a quarter of a million bucks. And now Hermes 36th. Ooh, there's Jeff Burton. And the 31 car gets a little bit sideways being in the middle coming off of turn four. See, oh! Wow, McMurray gets in that five and almost turns him around. Yeah, we're, it's gonna get it's gonna get more and more ugly now as we go. There's gonna be a lot less, you know, cooperation with each other. This is gonna get pushing and shoving. Marty. Yeah, there's more and more of these moments where you go, how do these guys not wreck? McMurray didn't say anything about that last one, but he says that his car is loose, but he's fast, and that's what he wants it to be. He said, quote, I'm way better than these other guys around me. We can beat all of them. Okay, just show us. Mark Martin runs back in the 18th spot in the six car after leading. Well, don't forget, he's still, or did he take four? Did he take, is he still on those two tires? No, I think he took four the last okay. time. Last stop. Okay. Marty? Well, the reason they're back in the pack, Bill, is that they had to pit twice. When they came down pit road, they took on the four tires. They didn't get it all the way full with fuel, so they had to come back down pit road and get all the fuel in that they could. Somebody's smoking back there, and I'm not sure I who saw it that, is. I saw that trial was just a moment ago. I don't know. David Strenny, perhaps, but there's a, it's a black and yellow car. I've been seeing some smoke coming out of the There goes Strenny in the 40. It's Mike Wallace in the 09 in front of Mark Martin in the 6. There's still smoke. I see smoke coming out of one of those cars. Could be a tire rub from contact and traffic. Strenny's already got some damage there. Let's watch the back in of the, the 40. 40. As he goes through the corners, when you really see it, See the smoke right there? Yes. Definitely smoke coming out of the back of that car. And that car was running up the track a little bit too. 
There's Tony Stewart in the 20, 22nd last time by. But you know what? Tony Stewart still has time to win this race. Jeff Certainly Gordon does. down low. Gonna take the spot away from Dave Blaney in the 22. And that is for 11 spot. And he can see the leaders. Alan? Benny, I just talked to Steve Letart, Jeff Gordon's crew chief, and asked him about that transmission being out third gear and how that might uh, impact his final pit stop. He said, just don't look for us to be here long. That's how I'm going to try to make up for it. But, yeah, yeah, yeah I understand. So what you're saying is they'll probably take less than they would normally because they're going to lose that time getting up to speed. Yeah, that's exactly it, Wally. They're going to try and shorten the time they're on pit road to make up for the time they know they're going to lose by not having third gear coming back up to speed. Have you been able to get the, how far they can go, Alan, how short they are? Uh, the, most of these guys are going to be somewhere around six or seven laps short. I am seeing a couple guys that are running the calculations again like somebody may try it. Oh, you try to go <laughs> all the way. Yep. Why not? Yeah. Ryan Newman. Won eight poles last season, one race. Talented young driver from South Bend, Indiana, leading the race, the Daytona 500. How about Kurt Busch in that new ride? His first ride, first race, really, since uh, Texas last November. Missed the last two races of the year when he was suspended by Roush Racing. The 32 car may have gotten the wall off of turn two. I see some smoke coming from that car. Jeff Gordon in the 24 on the bumper of Casey Kane in the nine. Casey Kane last time by was running the seventh position. Yeah, we see the 32 car now is smoking. Oh, he's going to wreck it now. And he did. And now he's going to put some debris down. He's going to try and get the pit road. All right now, how many caution flags do you have to run in order not to come down pit lane? Oh, wow. I think they'll all come down, change I, four tires. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. What, two tw tires. I think the mom will probably change two. You're, I'm taking four. 25 yeah. to go. Well, I, I would love to have four, but Mike Mark Martin back there for position, he might take two. Yeah. Very, very hard to get through the field when they're three wide. Now, here's a contradiction of terms. Matt Kenseth <laughs> is the lucky dog. <laughs> I don't think he'll agree with you no, on that. No, he won't. But... First car off the lead lap, that will put Matt back on the lead lap. Although they're... Better for me not to see. <laughs> I don't know how his car's handling, but there's nothing that when you're in, a, in that situation as a driver, and all of a sudden you're back in it with, you know, 25 laps to go. Well, there's some smoke coming from that car, but it's not from the equipment. Yeah. Overheating yes. from the cockpit. Was run into by Tony Stewart earlier in the race. And then was penalized by NASCAR for not responding to the request to behave politely. Matt Kenseth drives a 17 car. There he is, run into the grass by Stewart. Now here's the big part, across the track. And nobody got him. How'd you like to have that look out of the windshield? That's when he was the lucky dog. Now and this is what he was penalized for, going down and making a swipe at the 20 cars that came off pit road. They gave him the black and white flag. They didn't score him for one lap. Now the pit road is open. Cars to pit road, Marty. Bill Jamie and McMurray's running fourth. They have borrowed the front tire changer from Carl Edwards' team, and he overshoots his pit. He's over the line. He'll have to push it back. He will lose some track position. Four tires, no changes. Dave? Kurt Busch came into the pits thinking he might want a little air pressure adjustment in the right rear, just a little bit more in to help the car turn a little bit more, they decided. Alan? A brief debate about two or four tires on Jimmy Johnson's team radio. They'll go with four and an air pressure adjustment for the 48, Matt. Middle of your screen, Ryan Newman doesn't want any changes to the 12 car, says it's a little free on entry, but he like, oh, contact with the 21 of Kenny Schrader trying to make his way into his pit stall. Schrader is pulled in parallel. The eight car is now down and away. They made another track bar adjustment on the aid of Dale Earnhardt Jr. Wow, you could see it coming. No, it didn't, didn't touch him at all. Did I hear Ryan say he didn't touch him at all? Take a look. Let's see. 21 cars coming into the pits. 
No, he didn't. He did not touch him. All that smoke was from Schrader, and actually Schrader did a great job keeping it off of the 12 car. He did everything he could not to hit Ryan Newman right there. If that Ryan was. Newman wins this race, he needs to go straight to Kenny Schrader yeah. and say thank you, Kenny. You bet. Here's the 12 leaving its stall. When the drag when the car drops, you go. Heads up there by driver and spotter. Whoever spots for him leaving the pits. A lot of times it's the crew chief, sometimes it's the spotter. Under caution in the Daytona 500, the great American race and just 23 laps to go. 48th annual running of the Daytona 500. 18 different leaders, that's the track record. 13 lead changes, 29 caution laps. Hermie Sadler and Carl Edwards are the two cars out of the race. There are 36 cars scored on the lead lap. The spotters making deals. Dave Burns. And the crew chiefs are making very, very important decisions, Bill. Lance McGrew's decision was no fresh tires on Brian Vickers, number 25. Why? Just because when we get back in traffic, the car is just too tight. And I know even if we got two tires, it would be too tight in traffic. Track position's worth everything here. It's getting late, late in this race. We want to we want to win this thing. I mean, there's no doubt about it. But you got to know that there's good fixing to be some pileups behind us, and hopefully we'll just stay out in front of it. Your tire wear must have been good enough today that you felt confident in the in the in the rubber. I mean, the car is just it's been it's been flawless. It's just the first half of the race, nobody would work with us. Brian radioed in and said, "Would you?" take this sticker off the back says don't run with me we peeled her off about the fourth pit stop and we've been really good ever since all right somebody go with brian vickers just uh, don't <laughs> pass him bill thank you dave we saw jamie mcmurray overshoot his pit stall had to be pushed back 14th on the restart that that little mistake bp cost him a lot of positions 10 or 11 positions just sliding over that line easy to do here at Daytona. And it may cost him a chance to win the Daytona 500. 20 to go as they get the green flag. Mike Wallace has used pit strategy. Got up to sixth in the 09 car. And he goes with Jimmy Johnson in the 48. Ducks down underneath his teammate. Going to latch on to Ryan Newman. That's Casey Mears in the 42 car behind Mike Wallace. Wallace with a fuel-only stop, just Newman? like Vickers. Sorry, Newman's got to run. I wouldn't be surprised to see if he gets... Well, he's going to get shuffled out. Sterling Marlin with two tires on his stop in the 14 car. And this is where BP, you can go from third to 15th in a half a lap. There goes Newman. Look at Kyle Busch going by. Newman on the outside. Kurt Busch says, okay, what do I do here now? Well, Kurt had a pretty big run. You don't want to lift the throttle. Look it, if you find some space on the racetrack, you take it because you, if you let the throttle a little bit, it just kills your momentum. That's what Jeff Gordon said in the countdown. He said, you, the last thing you want to do, get out of the gas. Look at how this pack broke away from the rest of the guys. It's got about a nine car breakaway. If these guys would get in line, Junior and these fellas might not be able to. Well, that's too many laps to go. Junior will be able to run them down. The two tires did not work for Sterling Marlin. <laughs> There's Earnhardt with rookie Denny Hamlin, who won the Budweiser shootout here last Sunday. Then Jeff Gordon in the 24 in that Fleet 26 car of Jamie McMurray. Matt on Earnhardt. The biggest problem that Dale Earnhardt Jr. has, he's more like the Lone Ranger, doesn't have a teammate to work with. While the Roush cars are up there, the Dodgers of the Penske camp are up there working together. Junior having to do it all on his own as he dips down below the five of Kyle. That was close. That's going to be a close call. He forced his way in that one. Cannot go below the yellow line and pass. Here's the move. Here he comes off the trial. Goes on the bottom. Boy, I hate to make that call. I think he's clean. I think it should be like he's clean. I think he was on the line, but he wasn't below the line. And NASCAR agrees with us and says he was clean with that move. There's Junior on the high side, had a good run. Yeah, I think if Kyle Busch in that five car and Gordon in the 24 can line up behind Ooh. Junior, they can get there, but there's just not enough help for Junior right now. McMurray gave Mike Wallace a shot. Well, he did. 
Down into turn one. That was in a hard crash here in the truck race Friday night. Now McMurray needs to slide up in front of the eight car. Those guys can get together. Eight car going backwards. Look at all these guys going by Dale Earnhardt Jr. Jr. must have had to lift for something. He's finally falling back to Clint Boyer in the 07. That's a long way back. He had to get out of the throttle for something. I don't know if he lost the car or what, but that's what I was talking about earlier. You don't want to get out of the gas. If you do, that's what happens. Vickers continues to lead after a fuel-only stop. And Allen reported that someone said they wanted to be the first car off pit road to the checkered flag. Brian Vickers is it. The, he talked about uh, that's what Jimmy Johnson wanted. Jimmy Johnson wants that lead. <laughs> Those are teammates. They drive for Rick Hendrick and Hendrick Motorsports. Brian Vickers, 22 years old. And Jimmy Johnson. And I'll tell you, a lot of folks say there's a lot of heat on this Brian Vickers as a driver of the 25 car. Last year, all the drivers for Hendrick Motorsports won except him. So he needs a victory. How about Vickers, Dave? He's driving like he's got eyes in the back of his head, Bill. Actually, that spotter, Chuck Joyce, telling him every move the guys behind him are making. Vickers needs to know that so that he can block any move that he can and try to hold that lead. Allen. Imagine a football team going to the Super Bowl, and the week of the game, their head coach is suspended by the league and not allowed to participate. That's what's happened with Jimmy Johnson's team here this weekend. The crew chief, like a head coach on a race team, Chad Knauss not here. Darian Grubb, normally the man that sits at Chad Knauss's right side, looking at the computers, working with the fuel mileage, working with the engineers on the adjustments. He was promoted to call this race for Jimmy Johnson. He said to me this morning, we've got a deep bench on this team. Grubb is 30 years old. He's from a small town called Troy, Virginia. He's been with the team for four years. He may be working his way toward Daytona's victory lane. Boy, that top line had a push. While you were talking about Johnson's team, he had his hands full there, Allen. But now he does have a push on that 12 car from behind. Oh, oh and two cars in the wall. Hits to 24. 24 saved it. Made Man. the save. Great job by Jeff Cross saved that out. race car. All right, while he caution is out, the field is frozen. When the caution comes out. A lot of damage to that two car. Look at the rear of that automobile. It's gone. He must have just ripped a tire. He was sixth last time by. 14 laps to go. Here it is again. You see him right behind Ryan Newman. Here comes Jamie McMurray. Gets in the back of him and turns him in the wall. And that's what shredded the tires. Well, I think Gordon took the left side of his car off. I think Jeff Gordon just ripped the right side off his car. Was that from earlier damage? See something on the right rear of the 24 car? Have to get a better look at it. And McMurray just gets in the back. Talked about that earlier. You can't touch somebody's bumper in the corners of, at Daytona. That's our old friend turn two back there, right? Oh, Sterling Marlin got a piece of that too, didn't he? Sure did. Well, that's a disappointing end to Kurt Busch's day. I think Jeff Gordon is probably the guy, well, maybe the left rear is already flat, or Jeff Gordon might have been the guy that flattened the left rear tire on Kurt Busch's car. But you're right, the, the tire did the damage. Yeah. Dave. And they're trying to just at least change the tires on Kurt Busch's car. A southern phrase was used down here to describe the condition. Our car is poor slam up, <laughs> which means it's not going to win the Daytona 500 in Kurt Busch's first outing for Penske Racing. And that right front took one heck of a lick. As a matter of fact, I don't know if they can get the tire off. That might be what they're working on. Yeah, that's that white stuff in between the tire and the wheel is concrete. Yeah. Yep, that's what happened. So they try and cut the sheet metal away. Well, Kurt and his crew discuss that. The only way I'm gonna go is if he's posted. Why why isn't he posted? Kurt is, Kurt is asking why the 26 car has not been penalized for aggressive driving. Pit road is open. So far, no takers. So they must think that 
these cautions are, are their safety. A couple guys coming. Among them, Jeff Gordon. And pole sitter, Jeff Burton. I don't think Burton's handling the way he wants the looks of it. When they throw the green flag, guys, there's only going to be about 10 laps to go. Hey, B. Uh, Steve Latart, radio and the crew, check the right side damage. We're going to be in the back anyway. Take your time. Let's make sure you fix it good. This is what we've got to run up to the finish with and get all we can. Yeah, that piece of tape on the right rear was from the earlier incident with the off turn two, so. And, th and this is actually kind of a smart move because you know you got 10 laps to go. You put four tires on it. Every car you pass between now and the end of the race is a position in points. Right, three points. This is the first race of the year, so wherever you wind up in this race is where you are in points. And it'd be natural to think, well, I'm not going to win the Daytona 500, but if you keep your head about you, you can realize I'm still running for the championship. Right, so I'm going to go out in 20th or 30th, but I'm putting four tires on. These guys don't have four fresh tires, and maybe I could pass 10 or 15 guys here. And Jimmy Johnson has taken the lead in the 48 car. And we talked about Darian Grubb, the crew chief on this automobile. When it was announced he was going to be the crew chief, I walked by him and said, Darian, no pressure, just the Daytona 500 for your first job. He says, it's my first opportunity to win the Daytona 500. So he was confident even at the first day. <laughs> and that helps. Very much so. So they continue to work on the car of Jeff Gordon. Jimmy Johnson, his teammate, leads the Daytona 500. It's a good analogy by Allen. This is a team here without their coach, crew chief Chad Canals. He's got a teammate right behind him in Brian Vickers. Brian Newman runs third. Kurt Busch wanted to know why Jamie McMurray wasn't being posted by NASCAR. Here's Jamie's account of what happened. I was off the gas and on the brake, and it just kept going. I couldn't help it. I go tell him I'm sorry. I think he had to check up real bad because, I mean, I was all the way out of the gas when I when I hit him. I don't know if he had to let up. I just I had a run and I let off and I just couldn't I couldn't go down anymore. And I did. I was getting picked up in the back. It felt like. And of course, that 26 car last year had a 97 on it and was driven by Kurt Busch mm. for Roush Racing. McMurray moving over to take that ride from Chip Ganassi. Shootout time. Yep. Jimmy Johnson has been a championship challenger the last several seasons, but has not managed to win the title, but has been there every year. He drives for Rick Hendrick. There's Rick on pit road. Behind him is Brian Vickers. Who needs a victory so bad. Will he push his teammate to the victory or shall he go for the checkered flag himself? A lot of emotion packed into that 25 car as well, Benny. That was Papa Joe's car, Rick's father. And the man that found Brian Vickers was Rick's son, Ricky. Ricky was one of 10 people killed in a plane crash a year ago, October in Virginia. Ryan Newman, the 12 car, has been strong. He has another Dodge. Casey Mears, the 42, right behind him. But he lost his best friend. Kurt Busch. Kurt Busch, his teammate, not there to help him. So now he's going to have to really, really dig. And Casey Mears in fourth spot. He was on the winning team of the Rolex 24 year a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago. So he knows his way to victory lane. He's driving that famous 42 paint scheme now with those Texaco Haviland colors. Don't forget about Earnhardt Jr. back there in eighth spot. He'll be coming in a hurry. Ready? The first 14 cards in the running order Ready? did not pit. Ten laps to go, 25 miles in the Daytona 500. <laughs> Got Elliot and Sadler back there. A couple of those guys look like they laid back a little bit, which may help them. On a run to the front, you get a lot of momentum when you lay back. So if you can time it just right and hook up with two or three guys, you can pick up a lot of ground. Those top six cars would love to break away. Matt on Earnhardt, 
Junior's made it back up to ninth. Now he dropped all the way back to 20th. Under that call, she said, you know, I made an uncharacteristic mistake, especially in plate racing. It cost me, but no worries. We'll work our way back up to the front. So Pat, that's when he got out of line and ended up going backwards? Absolutely. Dropped all the way back to 20th, Bill. Slowly working his way back up, but he's not in that lead group of cars. Going to have to draft with the final push to get his pack up to the lead pack. Yeah, that... I mean, if it works, great if you can pull it off. But if you don't have the momentum to catch that front group, you may not have a shot at the win. Alan, how about Johnson? Uh, what do you think his favorite color would be right now, Bill? Here's a hint. Look at the stripe to his left. <laughs> Jimmy Johnson wants to hug that yellow stripe with this Chevrolet. He thinks if he protects the bottom, he might be able to keep all these hungry drivers behind him all the way to the checkered flag. And Benny, you talked about the pressure on Brian Vickers. Now he's in a difficult situation. He wants to win a race, but he might have to push his teammate to victory. He's getting pushed around right now. Let me tell you, Ryan Newman is all over the rear bumper of that 25 car. The 25 has been loose. And I don't know how much they got that car tightened up, but if Newman keeps pounding on the back of that bumper, that 25 car may just slide up the racetrack. He may lose that spot. And he took fuel only last time. So no tires, no fresh rubber on that 25 car. That always helps the handling. McMurray, the 26, tried to go by on the outside, was not able to make the pass. Here comes Elliot Stadler on the inside, along with the five car of Kyle Busch. Casey Kane moved over to block. There's McMurray in the 26. Now these guys racing side by side will let that eight car catch this group and the group that he's towing. Seven laps to go. Brian Newman in the 12, an update from Matt. Running in the third spot, Bill, right behind Vickers. He's had the legendary Buddy Baker on the radio most of the day, giving his pointers and also just pumping him up. Newman says the car is good, so is his tires. Matt Borland said 10-4, all in. Taking that gambling phrase, because Newman's a big gambler, they worked with a 42 and a 9 to try to stick with them since they're all Whoa. Dodgers but you have to wonder if they're bluffing. Wow, somebody got forced down at the bottom. Whoa, oh, how did he save that? And he, didn't, he only lost one spot. Well, he's gonna lose some more as he lost his momentum. Yeah, that was Kyle Busch, and that's not over. Yeah, the point gets back to the five. Man, six laps to go. Looks like Tony Stewart dives to the bottom, and then, and well, Kyle Busch just ran him down to the bottom of the racetrack. Well, blocked him. Yeah, went to block him. Stewart had that thing sideways, too. He sure did. And look at Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the eight car. He's trying to work his way back. There he is in about fifth or sixth spot. And looks like Vickers is going to the back. Newman has been able to get by the 25 car. Here comes Casey Mears, 42. Yeah, I don't think that 25 car has got the tires he needs to do what he's got to do. Black flag, Kyle Busch in the five car, aggressive driving. It's a pass through penalty. Kyle Busch was ninth last time by. He'll have to come down pit road at 55 miles per hour under green while the rest of the field goes around the track at 190. And he'll have to do it, otherwise he'd be like Matt Kenseth. And they'll pull his scorecard. But the big difference between the, the penalty that he's getting is he's got to serve his under green. Tony Stewart just had to go to the back of the pack. That's correct. So basically, the five car is just is out of the race. Kyle, they got us up on the board. Too wide, too wide. He's not going to get the pit lane this lap. He might have trouble getting the pit lane. If he does, it's going to be a big wreck. Be four to go when they get to the line this time. Jimmy Johnson leads, Ryan Newman second. Casey Mears third. Update on Kurt from Dave. And Kurt agreed to talk to us right now. He just asked, let me get over to this side. Kurt, you've had about five minutes to sit in your car while they rolled it back to the garage here. What was going through your mind? Yeah, we had a great car all day. I was so proud of our team. Miller Lite Dodge was beautiful. Working with my teammate, Ryan Newman, we had a shot at winning this race. And Rogers won the, oh, it's too bad watching TV right now. 
But uh, Rogers won the Indy race 13 times, and uh, <laughs> we were really going to do it today, but came up just a bit short. So thanks to all my sponsors. Great ride today, Mobile One and Altel on Ryan's car and all our great guys that we've got behind us. So we'll be back. That was thank just Kurt, a, Thank you very much. Kurt out of the 500, and so is the car that got tangled up with it, Bill. Kurt didn't really seem sincere to me when he sounded said that. sounded a little that. sarcastic. Yeah. <laughs> thanks, Dave. Appreciate you going back there and getting that. So Jamie McMurray brings out the caution. We could be looking at a green-white checkered finish in the Daytona 500. Was Bob, I thought Bobby Labonte might be involved, and let's see. There we see the Jeff Burton going up, trying to block the 26. They both get in the outside retaining wall, and McMurray loses it and does get into Bobby Labonte in the 43. And then Bobby hits the wall. And Denny Hamlin runs in the back of the 31. Maybe not too badly. Yeah, I think Hamlin will be okay. Boy, that 26 is hurt. Close race in here. Well, the closer you get to the finish, the more desperate drivers become. The more daring, because the reward is so great. Very disappointing for there for Bobby Labonte. Both Petty Enterprises cars that look good down here this week, both involved in wrecks today. The 26 was up there. I don't know if the 31 just lost the car and slid up there, BP, and... I'm not sure. Trying to block, or if he did lose the car, I don't know. That's off. The result of, uh, is the same. That's where did that happen? <laughs> oh, <laughs> turn seen two. it a lot. Yes. Turn two today. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You forecast that would be a difficult turn today, and it has been for several drivers. And that'll be interesting to talk to those guys after the race. And there's Matt Kenseth, with the 17 car, going by and picking up a few spots. 43, Bobby Labonte, Denny Hamlin, Jamie McMurray, Jeff Burton, Bobby Labonte. Damage late in the Daytona 500. And I think Jeff Burton is going to have to come to Pitt Road because I saw the, there he is on Pitt Road. I saw some smoke off the tires where they're rubbing the fenders. Good call on your part, Benny. Up front, Jimmy Johnson, Ryan Newman, Casey Mears, Elliott Sadler, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Rookie Clint Boyer is sixth. Tony Stewart has worked his way up to seventh in what has been a wild day. Then it's Casey Kane, Brian Vickers, Kyle Busch serving a pass-through penalty for aggressive driving. Which means now he has to start at the end of the longest line because when he gets to pit road, all the cars on the racetrack get to go by him before he get back out. But Which is still better than doing it under the green. Oh, because yes. Because he would have lost a lap if he did it under the green. Very much so. So Kyle Busch waits for the field to go by, then he will rejoin the longest line. It'll be a single file restart when we go back to green. And Tony Stewart is being shown in the seventh position. That's amazing. It's been a roller coaster day for that guy, huh? I'm telling you. Came in here with very high hopes. Really wants to win the Daytona 500. Won here last July, a race that ended at about 1.30 in the morning. Then climbed the fence, celebrated with the fans, went on to win the Brickyard 400, take his second series championship. Today it has been an adventure for Tony, but he's certainly in it. Dale Earnhardt Jr., past winner of the Daytona 500. You heard the guys on pit road talk about how Jr. admitted making a mistake, a rare mistake in a restrictor plate race. You know, when these cars put fuel in them the last time, they might have been figuring on a 200 lap race. Well, this thing is going to be about 202, 203. I wonder if those extra laps might mean something as far as fuel is concerned. You know, some teams thought about it, and some's prob some probably did not, Benny. Excellent point. But, but I think they're going to try to, I would think that NASCAR would try to get this thing. We've got five laps to go in the race. They would try to get this thing off as close as possible to the real finish. So they don't run into that problem. Well, we've already completed actually 198. Oh, okay. This is coming down for yeah. 199. Yeah. Okay. You trusted the computer. Did, what am I thinking? Gosh. Matt. Well, Bill, Dale Earnhardt Jr. has climbed the fifth, and he's, like I mentioned before, all by himself trying to figure out who he can get to work with him. But he was telling his crew chief, Tony Urie Jr., about his race car, which has been tight, but also about the motor under the hood. I'm doing everything I do. I'm just scared to go up there, 
lose all these spots. You know, y'all pit stops have been so damn good all day long. I hate to not get the finish that it deserves. It's like that old motor's like an old man. It'll wake up, run for a while, fall back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like Weber in the booth. Oh, thank you. Don't wake me up. Matt, that's entertaining to listen to him during an afternoon, isn't it? It's like Comedy Central, Bill. It's a pleasure to listen. I really think he should syndicate his radio traffic. But meanwhile, the 12 of Newman, he's trying to work with the 42 and the 38. He said, look, if they work with me, when we get to the last lap, it's every man for himself. But Wally and BP, can you wait that long if you're the 42 and 38? No. No. <laughs> no, they got to make it three, four wide is what they got to do. Let's get an update from Allen. All right, Darian Grubb, here's one of your duties as crew chief for the day. You get to talk to the TV reporter in the final laps. What's your driver saying about his chances to hold this pack off? I think his chances are very good. Chad Knauss and Mr. Hendrick have built an incredible team in this Lowe's 48 team. The Lowe's Monte Carlo has been great all night. I don't think we've fallen out of the top 10 the entire night. It makes my job pretty easy to be able to call a race like this. These guys are incredible, and we're just going to see how it works out. Are you nervous at all? I mean, all these fans up here are nervous to see how the finish turns out. What about you? Why would I be nervous? I got the greatest car and the greatest driver. There's a good answer. Good luck. Jimmy Johnson drives for Hendrick Motorsports. Hendrick Motorsports and Rick Hendrick have won five Daytona 500s with Jeff Bodine, one victory. Jeff Gordon has three. Darrell Waltrip has one. Darrell Waltrip got his only Daytona 500 victory in 1989. It came 17 years ago today on February 19th. Don't forget NBC's coverage of the Winter Olympics continues at 7 o'clock Eastern and Pacific tonight. Big night of all the coverage right here on NBC. Lights on the pace car go out. It will be a green, white, checkered finish. NASCAR will make one attempt to finish this race under the green flag. Next time by, the field will get the green flag. They'll make one lap, then get the white flag indicating there's one lap remaining in the race. Then they'll come around and get the checkers. If the caution comes out during this period, the race is over. NASCAR will use 18 scoring loops around the track and video replays to determine the final order. If the caution comes out, the field is frozen. You do not race back to the caution flag. Three extra laps, seven and a half miles. Something gonna run out? I don't know, it's about a gallon and a half of fuel extra. It could be. Especially that, you know, those stops, you're just trying to put as much fuel in as you need for track position, so we'll see. I know there's some guys worried about it. I would think so. Well, when you're sitting in this situation right now, I mean, Jimmy Johnson's sitting there going, man, I can't screw this. I can't screw this free start up. Then you've got guys like Newman and Casey Mears and Elliott Sadler, Earnhardt Jr. They've got to make the best free start that they've ever made because they're out of time. They have got to make it. They've got to pull out and, and make passes. Earnhardt Jr., maybe telling Elliott Sadler, I'll push you up there, buddy. That could be a signal. That... But you'll see a lot of mirror driving right now, especially on that 48 car. He's going to be looking out the back of that car as much as the front. He has to. Because if they get beside him, it's over for him. This race starts the season. You win it, it makes your season. The Daytona 500. Jimmy Johnson looking for his first win here. And beginning pursuit of the championship chase. The first four cars. Checkered, watch the 48. You know what he did halfway. So. Has never won the Daytona 500. Earnhardt in fifth has. But he wants it just as badly as those four. Yeah, ready. Green flag. Two laps to go. Looks like Elliott Sadler, the 38 and junior, might have laid back to get a run, but did they lay back too much? Yeah, we saw that the last time, BP, so they're out of time. Hopefully it'll work for them this time. It looks like they got a little bit better run than the last restart, and they've got a lot more cars lined up behind them in the front three. The rookie, Clint Boyer, in the 07 behind Earnhardt. They are going to catch the front three. Lap and a half to go. Oh, yeah, they've got a big run, especially Elliott Sadler. If he times this right, he can make a pass. Everybody's lined up. But they're lined up. Somebody's got to well, make a move. It's going to happen. Off of turn four. 
At the line this time, the white flag. One lap to go at Daytona. It's Junior that's making the move. He didn't want to do it, he said, but he's going to the outside. Got to. It's a Daytona 500. He's got to try, at least try to win. Meanwhile, Ryan Newman looked both sides of Johnson, nowhere to go, stays in line. This is what Johnson wants to see in this mirror, though. He wants to see those guys behind him, side by side. Casey Mears runs third. Junior's losing positions as he tries to get by on the outside. Tony Stewart has moved into fifth, sixth. Here goes Ryan Newman. He's going to try the high side. Which way will Mears go? Oh, hose this 12 car, Ryan Newman. Keep pedaling it, man. Keep pedaling. That's a, Clear by four. That's a oh, oh, crash behind, behind him. him. Crash behind him. The caution is out. The race is over. Jimmy Johnson has won the Daytona 500. With his car owner watching here at the track and his crew chief watching at home, Jimmy Johnson wins his first Daytona 500 victory. as crew chief. He said, it's my first opportunity to win. And guess what? He made the most of it. Because of the caution coming out and the field being frozen, NASCAR will have to use... Unbelievable, guys. Unbelievable! NASCAR will use computer scoring and video replays to determine the final finishing order. To Alan Bestwick. First award with the team owner, Rick Hendrick. Rick, congratulations. Another Daytona 500 win. I'm out of breath, I'll tell you. <laughs> this race is unbelievable, and it's un it's just a race everybody wants to win. This team's had a tough couple of weeks, and uh, it is it's unbelievable. We're just going to celebrate this one and wish Chad was here. Great, proud of the guy. And I believe the crew chief just ran off to greet the car, <laughs> spinning through the grass. Chevy congratulates Jimmy Johnson and the 48 Monte Carlo SS on another great team Chevy victory. 25 of the last 34 NASCAR Manufacturers Championships and counting Chevy and American Revolution. There was a crash on the last lap. That's why the caution came out. I think he wants the flag. I don't think he's going to climb the fence, but... And he has it. Alan Bestwick. Congratulations, you've won the Daytona 500 as a crew chief. I don't even know what to say right now. I have no idea what to say. I mean, I just gotta thank Jack and Alice for building this team the way he built it. Mr. Hendrick and everybody for giving me the opportunity and just all the tools that they put in place. This is just a, a super easy day, but we won the Daytona 500. What kind of a story you could tell your grandkids someday, huh? I'll tell everybody this for the rest of my life. Congratulations. <laughs> now we'll go back and find out why the caution came out. There's Biffle in the 16 car. He just goes up high and just car just gets loose. And around he goes all by himself. Goes back up the track. I tell you, everybody today has done a great job missing crashes. Jamie McMurray, the driver of the 26, was treated and released from the infield care center, and he apologized for the contact that took Kurt Busch out of the race. That's Grand the backstretch. Yes, yeah, sorry, BP. And they put those grandstands at the right place today. Didn't they see all the action? Matt. Well, Newman just got a high five from his father. Your dad's in tears over this second place finish. You didn't need the green-white checker, did you? Well, yes and no. I mean, it, I think it would have been the same either way. Uh, we used to sit up there. Dad and I used to sit up there in my grand, grandparents' old seats. So it's uh, it's special to get a good shot at winning this race. But uh, got to thank Altel Mobile, Dodge, Sony, uh, everybody that's uh, 
been a part of Penske Racing in the past to get us where we were. Um, unfortunately, Casey didn't decide to follow through with us. He gave me a good shove to get me out of the way, but didn't uh, didn't choose to go with us. But uh, um, we'll just have to see what happens. Uh, just, it was a great run for us, good way to start the season. Um, you know, best way we've started the season here before ever. Ryan Newman finishes second at Daytona. Dave? With Matt Kenseth now finishing outside the top ten, we think, uh, based on unofficial guesstimates here, all right, let's talk about all the contact out there today. You were involved in some and were penalized. Was the rule applied correctly today, in your opinion? Uh, well, I mean, uh, Tony took me out intentionally. There's just no two ways about that. He was mad uh, because earlier in the race, my fast and he got loose, which I didn't think I did anything wrong. I thought I left him plenty of room. The same way he raced, I actually learned that from him racing here close to people. So, uh, you know, he wrecked me intentionally, got put to the end of the longest line, which I didn't think is too big a penalty in a drafting track. So. Um, that's just the way it is. I mean, Mike Helton, I thought, did a great job this week explaining at the driver's meeting. You know, it was about aggressive driving, not necessarily bump drafting. And uh, just uh, just really disappointing. You know, Tony went on and said all that stuff earlier in the week. And then, uh, you know, if he's worried about people's lives and everything, and then he's going to wreck you on purpose at 190, I just I wasn't wasn't too happy with that. But um, just we'll just go on and uh, try to do a good job next week and uh, be happy where we finished and uh, go into California and start over. Teammate Mark Martin is leaning in here. Mark, did you have anything to add, Mark? Or Mark, did you have anything to add to what he was saying as far as the rule applied today? No. Okay. <laughs> it sounds like it was a rough day out there, Marty. Well, Dave, Tony Stewart rallied for an eighth place finish. Matt said he felt like your contact was very much intentional. What, what's your take on that? Yeah, Matt always thinks that. I mean, uh, I guess Matt didn't think anything when he got me sideways over in two either. So, uh, you know, he. He should have thought about that first. I mean, he he got back what he what he started in the first place. So, uh, and I got penalized for it. I mean, they didn't penalize him when he turned me sideways over there. So, uh, you know, he, he he should have been smart enough to know not to be tucking down on guys' doors in the first 20 laps of a 200 lap race at Daytona. So, I mean, he has no room to complain. He started the whole thing, and I finished it. How were you able to come back through the field though, and with a wreck, with basically a damaged race car, and finished eighth today? Yeah. Uh, just a good pit crew. I mean, they did a great job in the pits, did a great job fixing it, and, uh, you know, we just kept digging and trying to find the right holes. So, uh, you know, we got ourselves in a position there at the end. We couldn't couldn't race for the win, but, you know, to get a top five out of that's pretty awesome. Strong rally for Tony Stewart. Matt? Unofficially third. You had a Rolex from winning the Rolex 24 two weeks ago. You almost got the 500. A lot of deal making near the end there, Case. Yeah, it's, it's so hard at the end. I mean, you know, I, I kind of waved at Newman, you know, saying, hey, I'm going to go with you, but then, uh, you know, when he pulled out, the 38 had a big run on me, and I had to stay at the bottom or else I was going to get freight train. So uh, it's tough in these places. You just got to take what works best for you there at the end. But uh, I couldn't be happier. Congratulations to Jimmy Johnson, great friend of mine, and uh, I couldn't be happier to be a part of the Texaco Havlin team this year. It's been a lot of fun so far. Everywhere we go and everything we do, is it's getting better and better all the time. So I'm looking forward to next year, or next year, next race. What a way to start out the season for Casey Mears, unofficially third. Dave? And Matt Dale Earnhardt Jr. has looked over the scoring pile on there and decided that you are officially uh, where? Sixth place. Okay, he bets it's going to be sixth place. But uh, overall today, you ran strong and ran hard in that A-car. Yeah, we fought a push the whole time we've been down here. And and even on that last lap when I went to the outside of the 38, uh, got a real big push center off of two and had to back up and uh, ruined uh, Casey uh, Kane's run that he had, and we were just kind of stuck. And then I don't know what happened on the front straightaway. We passed a bunch of them back days beating on each other or something. But I'm so proud of my team. They give me a good car. Uh, DI, we, we come down here and uh, ran great. That's all I wanted to do. And I'm real proud of everybody back at, back at the shop and uh, all my guys down here that have uh, been working on this car for the last week. Uh, it's been a long week. So uh, we're real happy to be able to come out of here. A lot of guys weren't so fortunate. So we're real happy with the top 10. And surely there'll be better finishes for Junior here at Daytona in the future. Alan? In victory lane at Daytona with the Daytona 500 winner. And a hug for the team owner, Rick Hendrick. And a victory kiss from his wife, Chandra. There's more confetti than we need in victory lane. <laughs> a little overload, huh? Jimmy, you have won the Daytona 500. Can you tell me what that means to you? Say that a few more times. It, it doesn't even set in. I am so, so proud of this race team. Obviously, it's been a tough week for us. I wish Chad Knauss was here. I know he's kicking his TV set in right now. It's so bummed out, but his hard work got this team to where it is. Thank you. These guys up here that are getting rowdy. Uh, great pit stops, great race car. Everyone stepped up when we needed to. 
I have to thank Lowe's, all their employee owners, Hendrick Motorsports for the great race car, uh, my teammates. I, I can't believe this. Tomorrow morning, it'll finally soak in, I bet. You didn't lead for a long time in this race. Uh, were you wondering if you could get the lead? Yeah, I could. I just, you know, I've, I've been aggressive before. I've made mis some mistakes. I've caused wrecks. Uh, a lot of different things have happened. And tonight, I just wanted to sit and ride and take care of things. And, you know, after all the, the trouble this team's been through and all the criticism, I'm going to dedicate this one to all the haters of the 48 team because we won and we're in victory lane at Daytona for the Daytona 500. Earlier in the week when the problems came down that forced your crew chief to leave, did you really believe your chance to win the 500 was hurt, or did you really believe this team had enough strength to be here where you are now? I did. Deep down inside my heart, I believed that this team could still win it. There's no doubt not having Chad here was going to be a huge, huge handicap for this race team. But everybody stepped up and overcame it. Darian Grubb stepped in, filled in his crew chief. First time as crew chief for the cup level wins his first race. Um, everybody stepped up. So I, I'm just so proud of this Lowe's team. The last couple of laps, the green-white checker, Ryan Newman behind you trying to get a run on you. Tell me what was going through your mind and what you were doing on the track. I knew that I needed to get a good clean start. I got up through the gears and got going. And this Monte Carlo was on, on rails after that. And uh, I knew Ryan was going to try to get a run on me. And when he went to the top, I stayed committed to the bottom. And uh, one of my, high, uh, not high school friends, but one of my friends through the off-road ranks, Casey Mears, was behind me. And I knew at that point I was in good shape. So here we are. Daytona 500 winner, Jimmy Johnson. Want me to say it again? Yeah, say it some more, please. <laughs> we won the Daytona 500! Back-to-back <laughs> -back Daytona 500s for Hendrick Motorsports. Jeff Gordon, Jimmy's teammate, won it a year ago.